speak in the microphone. Thank you, Enrique. I guess we should start with a roll call, please. Of course. Chair Benton. Here. Vice Chair Boygan. Vice Chair Holton. Commissioner Ager. Here. Commissioner Gibbs. Commissioner Hawkins. Here. Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner Jolly. Here. Commissioner Overture. Here. Mm -hmm. You have a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'm recording it. Curious, was Commissioner Holton going to dial in or is he not available? I have not heard that he's available this morning. We can certainly, I asked him, I asked him to um, let us know if he would be dialing in. Um, he hasn't responded, but we can certainly open the line in case he does. Okay, if he does, that would be great. Okay, okay. Uh, would you like to uh, inform us of our next matter in front of us today, today please? Yes, Commissioner. So <coughs> this morning you have uh, before you docket number 18040305, Confluence DG LLC and Noble Energy. And Hearing Rouse, uh, Hearing Officer Rouse will introduce the matter for you. Very well. Before we do that, we should ask if there's any potential conflicts of interest amongst the commissioners for this matter. <coughs> Hearing none, Mr. Roush. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this hearing involves a relatively straightforward spacing application. Confluence DJ LLC seeks an order establishing a 1,280-acre drilling and spacing unit for the Niobrara and Codell formations and approval of 27 horizontal wells for sections 4 and 5, Township 7 North, Range 64 West, uh, 6th p.m. The setbacks requested are 460 feet from the unit boundary and 150 feet from any other well bore in the unit. The applicant requests no more than two multi well pads. The applicant seeks to exclude the existing Dillard USX AB number 05 99 H3 <coughs> well from the unit. This is all fairly standard for the GWA area. Uh, Noble protests because it has a better plan and it is the majority owner in the proposed unit. Noble claims that approval of the requested unit would violate correlative rights, adversely <coughs> affect Noble's Dillard USXAB number 05-99HC well, create waste, ignore the reasonably prudent operator standard, and create uncertainty. Notably, there is no competing spacing application or drilling and spacing unit before you this morning. Each party will have one hour to present its case. This includes opening and closing statements, direct and cross-examination, and rebuttal. The time limit does not include time for commissioner questions and answers to those questions. The order of presentation is set out in the final pre-hearing order. Thank you very much. I didn't see any motions come forward on this or any procedural matters. Um, there was a section here of the stipulation of facts that were is presented in our materials. So I'm assuming everyone's had an opportunity to take a look at that. Uh, do we want to go ahead and stipulate to the witnesses and swear them in again? Yes. All right. Any concerns on either party about the witnesses that you're going to present today? <clears throat> Very well. So if we could get all of them sworn in at once, then we can proceed. Would everyone who's anticipating being a witness please stand up? <clears throat> We're going to start on my right here, and if uh, the gentleman all first on the, my right would raise his hand, state his name, and say that he swears the truth, and then we'll just work to my left. Go ahead, please, sir. I'm Mike Dickinson. I'll swear to the truth. Thank you. Robert Sterling. I'll swear to the truth. Thank you. Angela Mallon. I'll swear to the truth. Brian Bowen. I swear to the truth. Mike Marini. I'll swear to the truth. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all. Would you like to proceed with your opening statement? Com uh, Confluence is ready. Very well. Thank Please you, Mr. Proceed. Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. My name is Christopher Hayes. I'm representing Confluence DJ LLC. The applicant in this contested matter, docket number 18040305. 
Confluence filed its application for a 1,280-acre drilling and spacing unit on February 27th, 2018. Confluence has previously had <coughs> three similar applications for DSUs in this area in townships 7 and 8 north, ranges 64 and 65 west. The previous three all adjoined this one. They were all approved without having to go to a commission hearing. Confluence submitted the necessary supporting documents for this application as required by the statute and the regulations and gave notice timely to the other owners in this tract. There's one protesting party to this application, Noble Energy, and of course you will hear from them. You're familiar with the requirements that Confluence has to meet. The applicant must demonstrate first that they are an owner of mineral interests as that term is defined by the statute. Second, an applicant has to show that they have given proper notice to the other owners in the proposed spacing unit and that notice that notice has to contain certain prescribed information. Third, they have to show that their proposal will promote the efficient and equitable production of the hydrocarbon resource from the proposed drilling and spacing unit, which includes that the proposal not harm the correlative rights of the other owners who will be affected by the unit. A protesting party must base its protest only on the grounds that are set forth in the regulations. And those are that the applicant has not complied with the notice requirements, that the applicant is not an owner, within the meaning of the act, that the proposal will harm their correlative rights or that the proposal will cause waste. When the applicant files an application that conforms to the regulations, it has met its burden. In the absence of a protest, the order should presumptively be granted. When the protestant files its protest, it has the burden of proving at least one of the four permissible grounds for an objection. In this case, it's not disputed that Confluence provided adequate notice, nor is it disputed that Confluence is an owner. <clears throat> Noble protests that um, the plan will harm its correlative rights and that it will cause waste. Uh, you will hear from three Confluence witnesses. Confluence's manager of land will testify, and her evidence will show that uh, Confluence's proposal is part of a larger development plan for this area of the DJ Basin. And that taken as a whole, Confluence's development plan involves significantly more acreage than the 80 acres in this DSU. You will hear from Confluence's VP of Geoscience that the geologic setting for this proposal is well understood and favorable. And you will hear from Confluence's VP of Engineering that the drilling plan will result in efficient recovery and production of hydrocarbons from the producing formations in this proposed unit. Uh, you will hear from them that Confluence has proposed three similar DSUs in this immediate area and had them all approved. Of course, you'll also hear from Noble. Noble has the burden of proving either that Confluence's proposal will cause correlative harm to Noble's interest or that it will cause waste. You will also hear Noble argue that Confluence, Confluence's proposal, if approved, will cause uncertainty in the permitting process because Confluence has a relatively small percentage interest in the proposed DSU compared to Noble. In addition to being without foundation, this is not one of the four specified grounds for an objection under the regulations. You will hear Noble argue that the DSU Confluence has proposed will cause hardship to Noble because Noble will have to elect whether to join wells and pay its share, as would any other mineral owner in the same situation. Again, this is not one of the grounds for an objection that the regulation specifies. What you will not hear is any citation to any statute or regulation that says a DSU application should not be approved when the applicant owns a relatively small percentage. Colorado's statute and regulations allow a small owner to make an application like this just as readily as a large owner. You will not hear any credible evidence that Confluence's proposal is anything other than a responsible, carefully constructed, practical plan to develop this part of the DJ Basin. When all the evidence and the testimony are done, you will see that Confluence has made an application that should be approved. And you will see that Noble would rather that Confluence had not made this application, but that finally Noble has no grounds on which to object. Uh, we are ready to put our first witness on. Very well. Confluence offers... Uh, they get their opening statement oh, first. Of course. Sorry. <clears throat> <coughs> Thank you, Commissioner Benson. Good morning, Commissioners, Acting Director Robbins, Ms. Larson and staff. It's always a pleasure to be before you. We thank you for your time, your careful consideration. You know, I had that quintessential human experience this morning. Sorry. Well, we right. need your name, please. My apologies. Michael Jewell, Burns, Figa, and Will, Will on behalf of Noble Energy, Inc. My apologies. 
but I did have that quintessential human experience today. You're driving down the road, flipping through Sirius or the radio or the AM dial. Oh yeah, that song comes on. And it ends 3.5 minutes later, and it's still in your head going over and over and over. And gosh darn it, by the 37th time it's in your head, you're about done with it, but you can't get it out. This case might be many things. I'm telling you, it is not that song stuck in your head. There are some details. There are some differences. So please give us that chance, and we'll, we'll certainly get there. It's not a typical DSU dispute. This is the test case that we've been looking at for about two years now of an ultra small minority interest attempting to file a DSU over a much larger open uh, um, operator, attempting to wedge its way into some sort of operatorhood. Now, as this body discussed even yesterday morning, these unnecessary operator versus operator challenges, well, we think there are some key points here that speak to that that this prudent operator standard that you read in our pleadings does speak to this, that when you have covenants and duties to landowners and other leasehold operator owners have the same, it compels you to discuss these things before they get to this level, before you fall into a race against time, a first to file mentality. We have to look at these things to arrive at sound policy. Opposing counsel is correct. First, correlative rights, very important and under the statute. Uh, I won't paraphrase Williams and Myers or how Commissioner Benton uh, correctly stated um, correlative rights yesterday, but every mineral owner has the opportunity to develop and see the fruits of that production. Noble believes that a 6% leasehold owner does not have the right to compel a 94% leasehold owner to act outside of its own careful planning, testing, and its deliberate forecast for success. Noble objects to Confluence is forcing itself as a surrogate manager over Noble's leasehold, especially when the surroundings in this case is dominated by Noble, unlike other cases you've seen. And second, waste, even considering the best legal and equitable circumstances for Confluence in this application, its plans simply lead to unrecovered resource, physical waste. It also leads to future commission hearings for spacing that actually works, retooling plans, retooling wells, maybe additional wells, unnecessary wells, and resetting expectations, which I would argue is economic waste. Somewhat academically, forgive me for a little bit here, but Noble believes there's a collision between two foundational legal concepts before you today, the rule of capture and correlative rights. I don't know if you've seen the PBS series on the excellent work, the prize, but they show these pictures post spindle top rule of capture said just like if you're the first to get the king's deer that deer was yours if you're the first to get your straw in the ground it's yours so everyone just get as close as you can pack them in create massive environmental degradation that doesn't happen today thank goodness because colorado in this board recognize the concept of correlative rights it keeps the rule of capture in check the rule of capture has this idea this this idea that spawns that it's the first in time always governs. Well, that may work, all things equal, but rarely are things equal. Correlative rights brings in everything else and sort of a golden rule type principle. You have a right, you have a right. How do we get together and make sure it's best for all? Yet, confluence would have you believe that first to permit or first to file for spacing proves readiness for development. Noble counters this untruth by highlighting the prudent operator standard, which sheds light on how an operator or leasehold owner should act when it threads this needle of correlative rights against the rule of capture. The prudent operator standard stems from the lease. By the way, a lease is a conveyance in the state of Colorado, not merely a contract. But the covenant to act as a prudent operator does run to the landowner, but the prudent operator realizes that the other leasehold owners have covenants to their landowners. But in this case, <coughs> Confluence has representation of 6%, where Noble has 94%. And because this is based in land, because it is a conveyance, you do have jurisdiction to look at the prudent operator standard as it governs this tight tension between the rule of capture and correlative rights. The bottom line, the prudent operator always comes back to landowners and the duties and benefits afforded to them. So therefore, Noble asserts 
the prudent operator does not file dubious applications knowing the benefit to its owners will be diluted. The prudent operator does not fail to consult before abusing the time of this commission, knowing that the supermajority owner will protest on behalf of its landowners and their royalties. The prudent operator, when faced with a circumstance, seeks to space and develop lands it can handle without relying on the, su the surrogacy of a larger operator. Furthermore, you looked at a case factually not as similar, but in looking at the prudent operator standard back in September, where one operator attempted to say, there's no permits filed, therefore you need to vacate the old spacing order and take this new one. And you ruled in favor of the protest and who said development means a lot more than just a permit. It means careful planning. It means surface use. It means dealing with certain types of landowners like the government in that case, which would raise the stakes and even delay the time to do something right. That's what Noble wants to do. Make sure this is done correctly. Noble thinks this instant application presents the next rung down the ladder that races to the bottom of haphazard oil and gas development a minuscule owner using your rules to hide behind an acreage lockdown. So in Noble's presentation, you will hear some compelling basic facts. We will just have two experts today. Land, that Noble is a supermajority owner of the interest in the application lands. That Noble owns a successful producing well in the application lands at 100%. That will be directly affected should this application be approved and that Noble has a long range, sober, and purposeful plan to develop these lands. Furthermore, Confluence has viable alternatives available to it that are actually more favorable for its landowners in Noble's belief. And second, our engineering testimony will provide several illustrations of how waste will be committed, correlative rights violated, should this application be approved. We'll look at economic damage, well damage, lost value, insufficient well spacing and planning, poor drainage calculations, and objective reasons for doubt that confluence is nothing more than permit rich, rig poor. Nothing in confluence's past behavior indicates it is prepared to drill these 22 wells requested in the DSU application. So wrapping up, I do want to keep five major differences compared to yesterday's hearing at the forefront of your consideration. Contradistinction to that circumstance, this one shows the greatest of imbalances, 9% ownership versus 94. It's a rock bottom for confluence. It's a proverbial inverted seesaw. Number two, confluence is not surrounded by acreage befitting a, lo a long range logical development plan. As you will see, they're actually surrounded by noble. There's no known takeaway capacity for confluence for this DSU. Number four, there are substantial technical differences. Confluence has unique well spacing issues in the way they have their wells designed to drain this pr proposed DSU, but ignores a favorable well bore spacing unit option. And lastly, number five, there is extremely limited history of drilling and development. Unlike arguably yesterday where Noble's uh, competitor has a full scale development history. This is a different set of circumstances. These five core distinctions are like the nuance you'll hear with those hi-fi headphones on. It's the same old song, but you're going to hear something new and won't be quite as devastating on your memory. All right, so wrapping up, Noble stipulates, as it has earlier in these hearings, we agree, there is no minimum standard. That's fair. But other states have looked at this, and today is not the day for rulemaking. But other states, as you saw in our pleadings, have looked at this and have decided that these standards are good for maintaining the sanity of a commission like this and also for the orderly development of lands. <clears throat> so today is not that day for rulemaking, but it is the day to stand up for correlative rights, the prudent operator standard, and common sense waste prevention. You have no obligation to approve the failed proposal that will waste resource, time, and your energies. Therefore, Noble requests at the end of this hearing, you deny Confluence's application at docket number 1804-00305. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Hayes, if you'd like to proceed with your case in chief. We are ready to proceed with our case in chief. Confluence calls Angela Mallon first. <clears throat> Will you state your name and your professional qualifications for the record? Oh, thank you. 
Will you state your name and professional qualifications for the record? I will. My name is Angela Mallon. I am the Regional Land Manager at Confluence Resources. I graduated from the University of Oklahoma in 2004 with a degree in energy management and a minor in finance. I have worked as a landman for 15 years. 13 of the 15 have been in the DJ Basin exclusively, and I received uh, my certified professional landman certificate in 2010. Parties have already stipulated that all of their witnesses are certified as experts. So I will simply note for the record that we've uh, moved to qualify Ms. Mallon as an expert. Ms. Mallon, did you participate in the preparation of the drilling and spacing proposal that is the subject of this application? I did. Uh, please look at Exhibit 24, which is up on the screen. Will you summarize it briefly for the commission? Sure. Uh, do you guys you have a pointer? Do you, okay, pointer, is that preferred? Okay. Um, so if you look here, uh, this is the spacing unit in question, and it shows um, 6% versus, uh, versus 90% with Noble. Um, our working interest calculations and our title information shows a little bit different ownership as opposed to what Mr. Jewell just provided. And since this exhibit was prepared, we have now increased our working interest to 7%, just so we have all the facts correct. Um, if you look just north, this is an approved DSU, 1280 DSU with 27 wells, just as <coughs> this contested DSU today. Same to the west, an approved DSU with approved permits, 1280 with 27 wells, and the exact same scenario here. Confluence has um, well over 90% in all three of these, and then we have a surface location here and here, which will be used as the, to apply the sister section concept where we drill, drill west and east. So we're minimizing surface disturbance. And uh, let's see, what else did I want to mention? To, oh, and we also applied just um, recently for a DSU here and have filled that with also 27 permits. So um, our goal here was just to continue our development plan as you, we actually do operate this DSU as well. Um, so we, we ha this is a, a core area for our company. So uh, just to clarify, uh, Confluence own, does Confluence own working interest uh, ownership in the 80 acres that are in the proposed drilling and spacing unit such that they would have the right to drill and operate a well in this DSU? Yes, we do. Uh, now let's look at exhibit 20. Okay. Assuming, assuming there's no operator error here. <coughs> Do you know what Noble's activity has been in this area over the last, oh, say, five, six years? I do. Uh, so everything blue is a, a layer from our map that shows Noble's acreage position in the township. And um, if, if you look in this township, since 2013, Noble's drilled one well, which is the Roadrunner well right here. This is not, that's the only well they've been that has been drilled in this area by Noble since 2013, and that is a short lateral well. All of these wells here were drilled in 2010. Um, these well, there's a few wells here and here that are a 2013 vintage, early 2013. So um, let me ask you whether you, uh, based on your own experience, would you say there's anything uh, especially risky or remarkable about Confluence's proposal uh, in the drilling and spacing units that it has up there on the screen? No, I would not. Um, and how many wells, again, has Confluence permitted in this area? We have permitted in this area about 135. Well, that's kind of uh, 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 ambitious. What's Confluence's larger plan? Well, we drilled um, our Picaroon well down here in late 2018. We just finished completions on that well, and we'll begin flowing it back any day. And we have money budgeted for 2019 to come up here to drill additional wells, to test additional zones, additional formations. And after that, we plan to proceed forward with full-scale development once we have confirmation that our uh, spacing is ideal for development in this area. Uh, what arrangements has Confluence made to minimize surface impact in this drilling program? 
where possible, we've tried to utilize the same surface location instead of creating four, like you could see here, we've created two to go both west and east. The alternative would be four locations. Did Confluence negotiate with Noble to try to uh, resolve the dispute that's at the heart of this uh, objection? We did. Are, are you familiar with those discussions personally? I am. And how did they go? Uh, Confluence reached out to Noble on, in this area specifically September 26th of 2017 to try to work some kind of um, a trade, a swap, something, a, a plan, um, something to that effect. And um, since that date, we have made at minimum seven different proposals to Noble trying to work some kind of resolution. We contacted them before this application was uh, received through the mail to Noble to let them know it was coming, to let them know that we recognize that there's a large acreage um, position of Nobles and that we want to work with them. But unfortunately, we have not been able to come to a resolution. Um, and then has Confluence sent election letters to Noble? We have. We proposed two wells, which would be the southernmost wells here. And we proposed those two wells. Uh, Noble would have received the election letters on January 9th, which makes their election due February 13th. So just to be clear, they have an opportunity to participate in these wells in this unit. Yes, they do. And therefore, if they participate, they will receive their proportionate share of production. So um, just to sum up then, is Confluence proposal exotic or risky, or would you say, or is it part of a larger plan to develop this area? Uh, no, I, I think it's absolutely consistent with what's being done in the basin and mm -hmm. more, more uh, zeroed in here. It's, it's identical to what's being done in this area. And it, is it intended to minimize the surface footprint of uh, drilling development? It is. Um, if Confluence is not allowed to drill in this drilling and spacing unit, then what will happen to Confluence's acreage in Section 4? Um, likely our acreage will expire because we will not be able to have any form of production that would hold and perpetuate our leases. The only chance that that would not happen is if Noble chooses to come up here and drill a well. So uh, is it fair, is it likely in your opinion that sections four and five will be drilled if uh, this proposal is not approved? If this proposal is not approved, I do not believe this will be drilled anytime soon. Now, um, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. How many acres does Confluence control in this play um, and in the larger DJ? Sure, we have uh, just over 5,000 acres in this area here that you can see on the map. And um, as a company, we have about 13,000 acres. And uh, compared to Noble, is it safe to say that Noble is a much larger player in this basin than Confluence is? Yeah, I, they're, they're um, substantially larger than a Confluence. So this is your core play? Yes, sir, it's one of them. Yeah. Uh, is this play more significant for Confluence then than it is for Noble? I'm sorry, would you repeat that? Is, is this play that we're mm -hmm. looking at on the screen arguably more significant for Confluence than it is for Noble? Absolutely. Uh, thank you. I have no further questions. Do you care to cross, sir? Yes, sir. Commissioner Benson, thank you. Angela, thanks for your time today. A couple of quick questions. Uh, I want to reiterate what I thought I heard you say on this Exhibit 20. <coughs> the blue is noble or at least reasonably known to be noble's lands, correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, and to your knowledge, there are other spacing options available to well, all operators, not just Confluence or Noble, but other than a drilling and spacing unit. Correct. Like the wellbore spacing unit. Correct. And you chose not to file a wellbore spacing unit. Correct. Even though perhaps where this, where you own somewhere between six and 7% in that yellow, you could have configured a wellbore spacing unit that would have been a much larger interest for you and your landowners. Yes. And you said you have 135 permits filed, but uh, just one well drilled so far of those 135? Correct. We, we just received all of these permits back and I would say probably the past six months. Sure. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? Ms. Mellon. Mr. Boygan. Chair, sorry I was late. 
Quite all right. Wait, should the record should reflect that Commissioner Boygan did show up during the opening <laughs> statement uh, by confluence. So certainly has the capability to participate in this hearing in full. I heard it all and thought it was magnificent. <laughs> I just have a couple of quick questions. Um, first, is there what's the exhibit number for that? Is it in the exhibits? I didn't. I can't find exhibit it. Exhibit twenty. The, this is exhibit uh, twenty. It's, that we're looking at now. The previous one 20? was exhibit twenty-four. It's item twenty-two. Yeah, I got, you okay. find it, item twenty-two. Great. Conference exhibit twenty. Thanks. And then the second question, I think maybe Mr. Jewell already asked, but um, did I understand correctly that you've drilled one well? Yes. And you've got one hundred and thirty-five permits that have been approved. Those are APDs. Yes, sir. Um, we've permitted 135, they're not all approved. But we just drilled our first well in late 2017, which is right here, or excuse me, 2018, yeah, in the southern location here. And then we have funds budgeted for 2019 to come up here and drill additional wells in the area. And then once we're confident of our spacing, <coughs> then we will proceed forward with full-scale development. Um. It's a little vague, but um, does funds budgeted equal funds in, in house, funds available? Do you have the money? I don't think we have any. I, I, it's not think. Um, we have the funds to drill wells in this area. I, will we drill all 27 wells in each DSU in 2019? No. That, because, again, we want to ensure we're properly spaced but the funds to drill these wells will not be a problem. Right, and, and so I think I'm hearing you say, correct me if I'm wrong, that if this DSU is approved, you will drill some number of wells in this DSU in 2019? Yes, that would be our proposed plan. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Hawkins. Uh, just looking at the same exhibit, there's a number of spacing units outlined. Are all those spacing units currently approved by the commission, other than the one you're proposing today? So, um, I, I believe so. I can't say for certain on nobles, but I do know this is an approved DSU, as is this one, this one, this one. This is the one today. This was recently applied for on the March docket, um, the upcoming March docket. And then I believe these here are approved. I, I am not positive. I, but I do know that Noble recently started filling permits in their, these DSUs in uh, December of 2018. So they, their permitting activity in the area is relatively recent. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a couple of quick questions. Uh, just to clarify, you said <coughs> you drilled one and said that's your first well, but that's not confluences only operated well is that correct that's correct we have some other areas core right. areas for us and I think you did say that you are the operator in the three DSUs uh, that uh, more or less adjoin this uh, well there's two that adjoin and one that's diagonal mm -hmm. so the I guess the one to the north and two to the west you're the operator of all three of those yes we are with uh, working interest in each of those over 90 percent yeah, the land map sort of shows that, so thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions? I have another, I'm assuming you have some more folks to call. We have more folks to call, and I don't have any questions for redirect. Okay, thank you for reminding me that you know, I should have asked that first. <laughs> um, Confluence will next call, um, Mr. Robert Sterling. Uh, please uh, state your name and your professional qualifications for the record. Yeah, my name is Robert Sterling. Uh, I'm Senior Vice President of Geosciences for Confluence. Um, I have 30, nice, doing the math this morning, it's scary math, 37 years experience doing this, uh, started in 1981, uh, and I've worked in Denver for EOG Resources, formerly known as NR Noel, I guess, I always, they always hate it when I say that, um, 
and uh, was with him for almost 14 years, then Cirque Resources and uh, was a geologist with them and uh, am uh, now the senior VP of this, this, this small company. Uh, I've been involved in oil and gas exploration and development uh, all over the United States for all these times and I've uh, been involved in some fairly significant finds and my work has led to um, some of the work that uh, brought us here today. Uh, the, uh, the, the EOG Resources Jake Well was one of the projects that I had worked on prior to my leaving the company there to go to CERT. So the parties have stipulated and I moved to certify Mr. Sterling as an expert witness. Um, Mr. Sterling, did you participate in the preparation of the drilling and spacing proposal that's the subject of this application? Yes. Will you look at exhibit seven on the screen as soon as the, there we go, exhibit comes up. Uh, did you prepare it? Here, let me help you out yes. a little bit Yeah, here. you do that. You're better at it. Uh, we do that. There we go. Then people can see the exhibit numbers. I told you he's an expert. Um, yes. Did you prepare it? Yes, I Can did. Can you briefly summarize it for the commissioners? I have to zoom in a little bit. With 35 years of experience, I could have read this, but. Yes, yeah, so this is a structure contour map on the uh, top of the Niobrara B bench, which is one of the target formations in this area. And I have the proposed DSU highlighted on this particular map. Uh, now, since you're uh, since you have the mouse, let's go to the next exhibit. Exhibit eight. Did you prepare it? Yes, sir. Will you describe it for the commission? Uh, this is a structural contour map on the top of the Codell sandstone, which underlies the Niobrara formation, and it's fairly conformable to the Niobrara here. Um, now let's go to the next exhibit. Exhibit nine. This is a isopack thickness map for the uh, for the Codel sandstone uh, in this area, showing that we have approximately uh, 15, 16 feet of Codel potential in this uh, in this block. Uh, now, now let's go to exhibit ten. And this is an isopack uh, thickness map for the Niobrara Formation, which consists of both the A, the B, and the C bench, uh, and all of the intervening, intervening marls. And then let's move on to Exhibit 11. Uh, and I should have qualified Exhibit 10. You prepared Exhibit 10, is that yes, right? Yes, yes, sir. And did you prepare this Exhibit 11? Yes, sir. And this is a cross section of some of the vertical well control in the uh, area, just showing that both the Niobrara formation and the Codell formation are continuous across this DSU. So taking all of these exhibits together, what do they tell us about the geology underlying this DSU proposal? Uh, this is typical for this north end of the Wattenberg field. Would you say there's anything remarkable or risky about the geology in this proposal, or is it pretty typical? Uh, pretty typical. Uh, now, let's go to Exhibit 24. The Commission has seen this exhibit already. Uh, how many other 1,280-acre DSUs have you worked on for confluence in this area? Uh, all of the ones shown in red here. There, there are four total. And is uh, the one that's the subject of today's hearing very different from the others? No, sir. So is the plan for this drilling and spacing unit consistent with the others that, that you have worked on and that have been proposed and approved in this area? Yes, sir. Uh, has Confluence been able to drill an evaluation well on any of its other appro approved DSUs? Yes, we drilled our Picaroon well, as Angela said, down here in the south end of this, uh, this one DSU right here. And understanding that it's still a tight hole, have you been satisfied with the results? So far. And does it encourage Confluence to continue with its current plans? I hate to say this in front of Noble, but yes. <laughs> um, Noble has objected to Confluence's drilling plan in part because they argued that the well spacing is too close, saying that uh, some of these wells will be less than 100 feet apart. Will you look at Exhibit 28?
Did you prepare this exhibit? Yes, sir. Um, will you explain to the commission what we're seeing here? Yes, uh, on the top we have a cross section, north south cross section that runs basically through section five here. <laughs> and what I have shown here are well spots, basically the way the layout for our drilling spacing pattern for for this area. And from a cross section view, you can see that we have these clusters of wells that are laid out in different benches. There is, as I said earlier, the A bench, the B bench, and the C bench that are all prospective targets here, as well as the Codel sandstone. Our general development plan calls for seven wells per bench within the setbacks in the uh, Niobrara formation and six wells across the inside the setbacks for the Codel. And when you look at those in a cross section sense in a little more detail, you can see here, I just took this sec section of this cross section and expanded on it the uh, different benches that we are laying our wells into, and the fact that in each given bench, each well will be at least 660 feet apart. That's our nominal well spacing. This is based on a number of studies that I've did, done in the basin, studying uh, well spacing tests done by operators, including our, our friends here uh, at the table to my right. And um, uh, it shows that that 660 feet is about the best nominal spacing to efficiently recover the reserves in any given bench. Now, when you go from bench to bench, I've got some distances here to show that from this particular well to that particular well is um, about 250 feet. I can't read the numbers perfectly. And then from these two wells that overlie each other, that they're actually about 160 feet apart because they're in different formations. And then with the Codel uh, wells, we're spacing those at about 850 feet apart from each other. However, when you look at this in map view right here, you could come to the conclusion that we have wells less than 100 feet apart from each other if you do not understand the three-dimensional aspects of this development plan. Uh, which is a nice segue to, um, would you look uh, next at Noble's Exhibit E? I think we're going to see an example of the lack of perspective on a three-dimensional. That's exhibit D. Oops. This one? The next one, oh, exhibit next one. E. There we go. So what are we uh, seeing on this exhibit? Objection, Commissioner Ben. This is our exhibit. We haven't even offered it yet. Um, the exhibits have all been it. stipulated by both parties. Mr. Moe, I'm not an attorney, so let me ask. Ms. Larson, what's the status of this exhibit? Um, I will ask hearing officer Rouse to advise us if this exhibit has been objected to or is it it's currently in the portfolio is it not hearing officer Rouse yes it's been provided in the portfolio and I believe the final pre-hearing order uh, deemed all the exhibits authenticated and admitted that was my understanding also I just wanted to make sure I'm sorry I'm going to overrule thank Please you proceed so I, I will answer Mr. Jewell's objection by saying we are essentially pre-butting one of their arguments. Proceed. Okay, so what I understand That's this to word. indicate is that we have well bores laid out in these various, what they call uh, crammed together and not others. Uh, and what it indicates is that some of these well bores are only 100 feet apart from each other, but as I indicated, uh, if you look at this not two-dimensionally, but three-dimensionally, we actually have these wells in different layers within the, uh, the, the Niobrara Formation and the Codel. And so from a map view, without taking into account the three-dimensional aspects, you would come to these conclusions, but it is incorrect. So um, in your experience then, is the arrangement that Confluence is proposing ordinary, common? Yes. Um, so summing up, given your training and experience, in your opinion, is Confluence's proposal exotic or risky? No. Does the geology of the area support the plan? Correct. Uh, following up with that, is it your opinion that this proposal represents a responsible drilling plan that will promote the efficient development of oil and gas resources in the drilling and spacing unit? Yes. Will this proposal correct, uh, protect correlative rights of other mineral owners in the DSU? Yes. Will it cause waste? No. Will it minimize the surface footprint of development in this DSU and others by combining locations for the development of two 1,280-acre drilling and spacing units? Yes, it will. Um, I have no further questions for this witness. Mr. Ster Mr. Jewell, sorry. Mr. Sterling, just one question, please. Um, 
in this 3D arrangement you mentioned, which my client will contest, we do understand the 3D nature of it, but have you seen Confluence test this concept in terms of the spacing that you illustrate in your exhibits? Not in a full development mode, but we have drilled in several of our DSUs to the southeast and to the south. We have drilled wells adjacent to each other with the same sort of hypotenuse type spacing that we propose here. Thank you, sir. No further questions other than we think the nature of geology is worthy of stipulation here. Very well, let me redirect. Uh, no, I don't have any questions for redirect. Thank you. Commissioners? <clears throat> A couple of quick questions for Mr. Sterling. Yes, sir. So I think you asked about some of the question was whether or not you had tested this spacing concept within Confluence. You mentioned you had a fairly long history and experience, which I was pleased to say, well, about the Are you same calling me old? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that, that I was trying to think and said, well, that's pretty close to mine. So okay. then I guess we're both old. We're, we're, we're still kids. Yeah, right. Um, have you had any experience in other companies or other places or looked at this spacing development elsewhere and done it, had a chance to evaluate it? Yes. And, uh, I, and I've looked in, in this basin at other operators, including Noble, who have experimented with well spacing and... Uh, uh, when you look at the um, results of well spacing versus EURs, and given that you know all of these occur at times when completion technology changes, almost you know month to month, operators are finding newer and better ways to complete these wells. Uh, but just taking a data set that has all the same completions, say Anadarko will drill out a spacing unit with different different spaces spacings. Uh, the, the, there's the, the, the baby bear spacing that's too cold. There's the mama bear spacing that's, uh, um, or the papa bear spacing that's too hot, or I guess it's mama, papa, and baby, but you, you get my point. There's, there's, there's wells that are, if, if you drill one well in a DSU, it's going to recover some oil and not have any interference. Um, like this well that's been sitting in this, this, uh, section, uh, here for all these years. This one right here, it's not a very good well. I think we'll speak to that here in a minute. But uh, uh, the uh, it, then there are, are spacing tests where people have drilled wells 300 feet apart, and you see interference, you see poor well performance, low EURs. That's overspending. That's overdrilling. Uh, as I said, based on numerous operators and numerous studies, I see the uh, the 660 foot spacing uh, being the proper spacing. Now, right next door to this unit right here, Noble has permitted wells that are actually a tighter spacing than that, but they're just permitting wells in one bench. Uh, and they have eight wells within the setbacks in one bench. So as opposed to my seven well bench model, they are spacing their wells closer than I would in any given bench. So that's to clarify that your, the 660 you're talking about is in a given bench. In a given bench. All right, very well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Confluence uh, next uh, offers the testimony of uh, Mike Dickinson. You probably are even better at operating this mouse than I am. Please state your name and qualifications for the record. Good morning. Thanks for your time today. I'm Mike Dickinson, uh, Senior Vice President of Operations for Confluence. I've been with, um, with Confluence since we started the company in 2016. Um, I'm an engineering graduate of the Colorado School of Mines um, in 1995. Uh, so um, I guess... Um, with respect to levels of experience, I'm a youngster compared to Mr. Sterling, uh, but I have 24 years um, in the business. Um, part of that, I spent 10 years um, at Noble Energy in various roles, um, technical roles, uh, development, uh, planning, and operations. 
um, and have spent um, about 15 years uh, working the DJ. Um, and as uh, stipulated, we moved to certify Mr. Dickinson as an expert. Uh, did you participate in the preparation of this drilling and spacing proposal? I did. Particularly the engineering analysis? I did. Um, so will you describe briefly for the commission this proposal this, that's the subject of this application and proceeding from an engineering point of view? It's an application for a, a spacing unit of 1,280 acres with um, development of 27 wells for the Codel and Niobrara in sections four and five of uh, 764. Will you uh, look at exhibit 22 on the screen? Uh, and there's a pointer there if you need it. Uh, is this a fair and accurate representation of the plan that Confluence proposes? It is. Now let's look at exhibit 17. Will you describe this for the commission? These are the um, recovery and drainage calculations performed by MHA on behalf of Confluence. Um, at the time of the filing. So this is the uh, calculations done for the Niobrara. Did you review these calculations? I did. Do you endorse them? I do. Now let's look at exhibit 18. And describe them, please. These are um, the same calculations of recovery for the area and drainage for the Code L. Did you review these? I did. Do you endorse them? I do. So what do exhibits uh, 17 and 18 tell us about Confluence's proposed project? In, in summary, when we look statistically at this area, um, it gives us an opportunity to evaluate um, well recoveries and drainage and how um, we can uh, use that to evaluate the economics of um, development here. So is, is, is Exhibit 19 a fair summary of your engineering conclusions? It is. Um, and this exhibit is in the record of materials that's in your file. <clears throat> uh, there is an existing noble well on the proposed DSU, is there not? Has Confluence taken that well into consideration? There is an existing well in the unit, and we've excluded it from the spacing application. Um, this is Exhibit 21. What's this describing? This is the public data um, of the production history of Noble Energy's Dillard USX AB0599HZ. You can see it um, production commenced in October of 2010, and the most current record was October's production for 2018. Plotted is oil, gas, and, and BOE. And is this the well that is on the drilling and spacing unit that you're proposing? It is. Will Confluence's proposal impact this well? It may. Um, you know, there's um, plenty of discussions about interference. The, the basin, um, you know, definitely folks that operate and um, produce in the basin um, understand how much interference uh, we have just given the nature of the checkerboard of development. Um, given that we were proposing to drill 27 wells in the unit, um, there's, a, there's a good chance that this well um, could be negatively impacted. Although statistically, when we see in the basin, uh, usually that's a temporary uh, impact and wells uh, generally return to a neutral state, um, but it's possible um, given the 1.7 barrels of oil that it made um, in 2018, on average, it's possible we could negatively impact that. So let's assume for the purposes of, of this next question that Confluence's wells, that the DSU program, would cut the production from Noble's Dillard well, this well, in half. Uh, will Noble have the opportunity to earn substantially more production from its share of production from the proposed Confluence wells in sections four and five? 
They will. Um, and um, first and foremost, we take all the precautions um, and best practices to avoid that uh, negative interference with the Dillard well. Uh, but certainly Noble would have um, an opportunity to participate in new horizontal wells with new technology um, and have orders of magnitude um, opportunities of improved production from this unit. Uh, now let's look at Noble's Exhibit D. Is the well in this exhibit the diagonal well in Section 5 of Confluence's DSU? And, and I realize this, this exhibit has a lot of information on it, so both the graphic and the text are important to my question. The exhibit is inconsistent. Um, the, um, the map um, would appear to show the unit um, that we're discussing today, um, although I, um, it says it's section four and five. So that appears to reflect the unit we're discussing. The well is a well that's 15 miles away. Noble uses um, well naming convention of BB, um, which is in a township five north, um, 63 west. So it's, it's not the, the well in question. Now, um, this is exhibit 23, what does this show? This, uh, this map is an example of, um, that highlights um, what we're discussing today with, with the application for the Almont DSU with the diagonal producing um, horizontal uh, Dillard well. <coughs> This is in a different area, but it just shows um, that this is not an uncommon thing to come across um, where somebody has drilled a parent well in a section and later um, somebody comes around and, and um, spaces and, and proposes new wells. These are three examples where Noble has producing um, diagonal horizontal wells that they had drilled. These would be you know, a legacy well in their program and they later have been spaced into DSUs and permitted and, um, and uh, completed over the top of those existing wells. You can see the vintages in the top right. In 2009, a well was completed. Later, new wells were added um, four years later. Uh, again, in, in sections 31 and 36, diagonals were, uh, were drilled in 2010 and five years later, new wells, um, you get the drift. So is it fair to say that the uh, presence of diagonal well in a proposed horizontal DSU is not unusual? It's not. All right, this is our old friend Exhibit 24. Is Confluence's current proposal part of a larger drilling program that Confluence is pursuing in a systematic way? It is. Um, this, um, this is a core area for us and th this exhibit um, is an example of what we're doing not only in Seven North but in a couple of other core positions. Um, we started the company in 2016 and we've been very methodical with a strategy to acquire leasehold space, permit, appraise, and develop to, to uh, deliver values to our investors. And this is an example of that where we've put together 5,000 acres, we've spaced it, permitted it, uh, we drilled our first appraisal well um, that uh, is coming online later this week. Um, as Angela mentioned earlier, we've budgeted to drill more wells up here this year. Um, and for that, um, we generally assume people go non-consent, and so we'd need to be prepared to pay 100% of the bills for those wells. So um, we've done that, um, and certainly um, as results um, come in, we'll um, 
continue to consider the next uh, step for development here. So um, let me uh, ask you to explain to the commission how the surface locations work together here. Yeah, the, this um, wherever possible, um, we've um, we try to incorporate the sister section um, opportunities in, in that we can um, consolidate surface locations and develop in multiple directions. And this is an example of that. Um, for this Allmont unit, we can develop to the east from surface locations that are shared for the development um, for the drilling to the west. It creates um, a lot of opportunities for us to reduce impact on surface, um, reduce nuisance, uh, traffic, and uh, those sorts of things. And do you have a surface use agreement in place with the owners in uh, sections uh, six and one? We do. So to sum up, given your training and experience, in your opinion, is this proposal exotic or risky? It is not. And following up with that, is it your opinion that this proposal represents a responsible drilling plan that will promote the efficient development of oil and gas resources? It does. Does this proposal protect correlative <coughs> rights of mineral owners? It does. Will it cause waste? It will not. Will it minimize the surface footprint of development in this drilling and spacing unit and others by combining locations? It does. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Commissioner Benson. Mr. Dickinson, thank you for your time. Good to meet you this morning. You testified earlier, correct me if I'm wrong, at the drainage radii for Codell Well in these lands is 137 acres, thereabouts. That's correct. And earlier, Ms. Mallon um, stated that your land position is approximately 7% as of today. That would be mathematically 89.7 acres. So with that in mind, it's it's doesn't really strain reason to suggest that you couldn't drill even one Codell well if this were solely your acreage you were drilling on. To be honest with you, I do not understand that argument. My history in the oil and gas business, um, I, that argument does not make sense to me. In other words, you need the acreage of Noble to even drill the Codell. That's why we've um, spaced it. And secondly, you said the proposed DSU may affect the Dillard USX well. Is it possible that one of those effects could be throwing that well offline or substantially offline? Yes, that's what I testified to. We could cause a negative impact to the production to the 1.7 barrels a day. And in your experience with confluence, have you ever seen any drilling of horizontal wells by confluence throw any other well offline? Yes. No further questions. Any redirect? Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions for redirect. So um, a moment ago, you testified that uh, that's why we are spacing. Uh, it, is it not true that you are drilling this, you, that you are seeking this spacing order to allow you to develop your acreage position in these two sections? That's correct. Um, and when Mr. Jewell asked you about throwing the diagonal well offline, uh, will you again clarify for the commission what the daily production of this well is? Well, um, it, I, I will, and, and um, I might add, we have a plethora of opportunities and best practices to use here to try to minimize that. Um, and um, we, we would offer to buy that well from Noble. Um, we'd be happy to do that um, to, res to resolve the concern that they have. Um, and then we can protect uh, the well and um, move on about our business. Quite frankly, the impact to it um, would not be of a concern for us financially. We value the well at um, a very nominal amount of money, um, round off error, if you will, in the grand scheme of the development. So we, we'd, we'd happily buy the well, um, we pay the cost to plug the well, um, and, and certainly, you know, take other best practices to avoid damage to it. Um, 
it's, um, you know, certainly uh, I don't want to be callous about the impact, but a, a barrel a day well for Noble who produces 120,000 barrels equivalent a day, um, it's, it's more about protecting the well and not having an environmental concern or, you know, some damage that creates a release uh, to me than some financial concern. Do you, and this is my uh, last pair of questions, do you know uh, what Noble's criteria are for deciding when to plug and abandon a well based on daily production? Um, I, I do not. Thank you. Will the chair allow a quick comment? Yes. We understand the nature of spacing. However, I think the point is your position is so small that it can't even allow for the fundamental minimum to be drilled. Thank you. Mr. Hayes, do you care to have any comment about that? I, I, I think that uh, that comment represents a kind of a clash of civilizations argument. That is the point of spacing. <laughs> it's almost as good as your opening statement. Commissioners, any questions? Mr. Chair, I have one, one question yes, for Mr. Mr. Dickinson. Um, you testified that there are a number of instances in which um, subsequent laterals have been drilled over or in, or to, tr to, to um, what's the word, transect, uh, cross, diagonals. Um, in the instances that you were testifying about, were the owners of the horizontal, the, new, the later laterals, the same as the owners of the diagonal wells, or were the owners different? In that, the example in the exhibit, uh, it's the same owner. So are you aware of situations where different owners drilled the horizontals, the later horizontals? Um, uh, owners of those wells were different than the owners of the diag pre-existing diagonals? Uh, I'd answer, I have two, two responses. Um, there are definitely examples of somebody that is operating a spacing unit that has an, a, a legacy horizontal well that they're developing over the top of having different owners and interests in those particular well bores. So yes, Noble may operate the legacy diagonal well and operate the unit where they drill 20 new horizontal wells. The interest in those wells may be different. So you may be harming a well of uh, a party that is perhaps not in other wells, uh, if that makes sense. Additionally, I might add, I mean, it, it's a unique situation when you have a diagonal well across a section and you go develop over the top of it. It happens quite a lot. In 2010 and 11 and 12, in the, in the beginning of horizontal development in the basin, these diagonals were kind of the thing. And, and we quickly realized that um, that was gonna complicate things for us. Today, where people are either standing up or laying down, we run into the same interference. It's just in a different way. When you approach the section line with your new well at the 460 foot setback and somebody drilled a section line well in there, um, it's, ha it's happening to us right now in a more traditional 2019 looking development where we're up on the <laughs> section line at 460 feet and another operator has drilled a, a horizontal right down the section line next to us. It's the same sort of interference. It creates the same problems that these uh, diagonals do for us in, in, on, in, on, in this legacy example. And we have the best practices about how to deal with it, how to protect one another, work with other operators, and try to reduce that interference. Thanks, that's a good answer. Okay. Other questions, other commissioners? Mr. Hawkins. Um, from your perspective for the well that's uh, diagonal that you have to avoid, is the, the diagonal well producing below its economic limit at this point? I mean, is it, I, is I, it still I, economic to continue to produce that? I well? can tell you in my experience, this is an uneconomic well. The fixed LOE cost associated with this well is much higher than the two barrels a day 
$50 oil. Right. I haven't done the calculations, but in my experience there, it's um, it would be very difficult to believe this is an economic well to continue to produce. Thank uh, you. I think perhaps let's make sure that we clarify that that's speculative based on it's your my experience. opinion and my experience. And, yeah. and I, I, I spent 10 years at Noble. I um, was a director of operations, very intimate with the organization, the, the cost basis, uh, what they pay a pumper. Um, and to, to have a guy go gauge a tank out there every day uh, is more expensive than a two, two barrels of oil. Yeah, so we want to clear, this is it's my opinion. For our benefit, it's your opinion based on your experience. So it's. And I can tell not, you yeah. um, a fact um, as uh, a vice president at Confluence Resources if this was our well, we would have already plugged it. And if you did testify that you obviously said you would be willing to acquire it and plug it. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm not, I don't want to mean to step on your, if you have any more questions or anything, but no, I do I, want to make I sure just, we clarify that that's not, you know, the, that's the point I the was trying to get it doesn't at. have access to the actual operating data this well. So it's just based on his experience in the base and the knowledge. I, right. I mean, there may be other reasons that Noble wants to keep this well on production. Uh, but from my experience as well, it, it looks like an uneconomic well. So that's the point I was trying to get into the record. Yep. And I agree with that. Yep. I mean, I, I don't know the, the, the rest of the backstory and it may be, uh, there may be more to it, but just based on the public information and uh, what I know, you know, certainly um, we look at the forecast of the well and value the well at $26,000. I mean, what we're, what we've spent in preparing for this hearing um, is would largely have paid for the purchase price of it. Well, I'm, Mr. Jewell, I'm sure you'll have an opportunity to respond. Um, can you, I, I was trying to write notes when you went through that. You said the well in their exhibit D is a township away or more than one? Um, to be clear, the, of the Allmont unit that we're talking about today is in 764. Okay. Noble's um, well that they're, they, they're um, in their exhibit that they say will be harmed is in township 5. 63, which is as the crow flies 15 miles away. Yeah, it's a couple more than two townships. Slightly Correct. more than two townships. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank Any you. other questions? Those are all your witnesses. That concludes our case in chief. Okay, so I was going to suggest perhaps we take a break before Noble comes forward, but I did want to uh, had one question for Mr. Sterling before we close this, and I just briefly for clarification, uh, in your exhibits, there were, uh, let's see if I can pull this up just for one of the quick ones. Um, yeah, so Confluence Exhibit 7, for example. There we go. So down at the bottom in the legend, you show a line was says this equals a fault, which looks very much like the contour intervals in there. So I'm curious, does there actually is there actually a fault in either this exhibit or the other exhibit on that map? Uh, the maps that I presented uh, in this, I did not put faults in because at the time we made these displays, um, I had no seismic available to me. Uh, with it with, within confluence since since then we have drilled the well down here in section seven uh, I purchased three-dimensional uh, seismic data that's available all through this area here and I've mapped faults there are some small faults in here very typical of uh, what we see elsewhere in the Wattenberg Basin but this is a common legend that I put on all of my maps whether there's a fault or not well it's a little confusing because they're because it looks a lot like the contour intervals and just well, want to make sure. To our, to our young eyes, it looks the same, but if you zoom in on it, it's actually filled with green. <laughs> Lovely really? forest green, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you said they're fairly small, so can you characterize the throw on these? And uh, throw will, will be at most 30 feet, 35 feet. Uh, there's, uh, and, and the extent of these faults, they're all discontinuous faults with maybe a quarter mile of uh, any given fault uh, from, say, from this point to that point, typically in this part of the basin, those are anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of a mile in length. 
and they tend to be both up to the to the to the west and down down to the to the west, depending on how the orientation of the faults. They, they they tend to form either horse or grobbins. So these faults are usually paired together. Uh, and the seismic data does a marvelous job of showing where these faults are. I think, as you said, you purchased 3D, and how will that affect your uh, development plan for your well plans? Well, it enables me to do a better job of well bore <coughs> placement, uh, so that we are not uh, um, having the faults adversely affect us where we'd be drilling out of zone. You now, we are believers in having the well bore be in the zone that we are trying to complete rather than sort of a, a drill and pray that the frack will get to something. Uh, we've never, in my experience, and you've noted it's a long, long period of time I've been doing this. Um, we had a saying at EOG where we could never frack our way into happiness. So it was imperative there to drill in zone. Um, so seismic data helps to con constrain that, plus the technology that Mike is using to drill the wells with these uh, newer steering tools, rotary steerable tools, enable us not only to have the ability to stay in zone, but our well bores tend to be a lot, rather than looking at like strings of spaghetti in the ground, they tend to look like proposed surveys because the well bores are so straight. And that allows for uh, a, a better, more efficient completion. And I think the things you worry about is waste. There's less waste when you drill a well with these, these better technologies. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Here you go. A break, commissioners? Never pass it up, right, commissioners? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. All right. Uh, try to reconvene here about 25 after.
Mr. Jill. Thank you, Commissioner Benson. Welcome back. <clears throat> For Noble's case in chief, we would like to offer the testimony of Mr. Brian Bolton. Mr. Bolton, could you please briefly describe your education, please? I have a JD from the University of Denver in 2007 and a Bachelor of Economics uh, from 2004. And how many years of experience do you have in land? 12 years of experience, uh, eight of them with Noble in the DJ Basin. And are you familiar with the lands that are under consideration today? I am. So if it would please this body, I would present Mr. Bolton as an expert. We're looking at Exhibit A here for Noble. Can you please identify this exhibit, Mr. Bolton? This is a map of the DSU proposed by uh, Confluence, uh, overlaying with Noble's leasehold of approximately 94%, showing our existing production in Section 5, uh, the Dillard Well. And was this exhibit created with your knowledge and direction? It was. And could you please describe your ownership in this proposed drilling and spacing unit in these lands? Noble, Noble has approximately 94% in this DSU. Uh, we have a 100% leasehold in Section 5 uh, with 100% working interest in that existing uh, well. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. And these lands contain a well that is on 100% Noble acreage. Can you please describe that well? The Dillard. USX well we've previously discussed, uh, drilled in 2010 by Noble Energy as part of its first kind of initial pass at horizontal development. And you're familiar with its history and its current production? Correct. And is that well a is still making money for Noble? Correct. The well is still economic for Noble Energy. It's also serving another purpose by holding our 100% lease in the section. <clears throat> um, Mr. Bolton, have you, on behalf of Noble, ever completed any deals with Confluence in the past? That is correct. In November of last year, Noble and Confluence were able to close a deal where both sides came to an agreement on an unrelated matter, but where both sides received some value. And uh, so in the past, Noble has been and is willing to work with Confluence Energy. Unfortunately, that is not the case in this instance. And even stepping back, generally, Noble is in the business of making deals that are profitable for both parties, correct? That's correct. We, we closed quite a few deals last year with other operators and attempting to shore up our leasehold in areas so that we are developing our leasehold and other operators are developing their leasehold. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Bolton, does Noble currently have development plans for these lands? There are no current development plans outside of the fact that we've got 93%, 94% of the leasehold in this section. Uh, I believe acquiring a lease is the first thing that anyone should do when developing an area, and Noble has done that in this area. Has Noble drilled any appraisal wells on or near these lands? Noble drilled the Roadrunner well, was com came online late last year, 2018. Uh, we've been able to start looking at some of that data for that well. It is one section to the east. And would you say, or well, how important is that an appraisal well for future development? I, I think looking at this area where we've kind of, we haven't been active in this area for a while, uh, commodity prices go up and they go down. It's not always economic to develop this area. So looking at our new completion technology in 2018, compared to what we use in 2010, it's important to look at those stats before coming up with a full board development plan of this area and understanding the data as it comes in now before running out and, and filing a DSU and filing permits. It, that we're, we're kind of a cart before the horse instance there where we would rather look at the data because we have a, an overwhelming majority of the leasehold in this instance we want to look at that data before running out and wasting this commission's time filing DSUs and permits for an area that might not be economic. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. And to your knowledge, has Noble filed for any APDs in the application lands? No. 
And why not? Uh, we're still evaluating our test well, uh, one section over. And so before before we can look at that, we didn't think it was prudent to go ahead and, and file permits and put a DSU, especially with, given where we have such a high working interest. So you mentioned cart before the horse. And I sense you're suggesting that it takes more time to have proper development on a large scale development in this portion of Noble's land ownership. That's correct. Uh, the rules, your rules, don't address timing. And protection of court of rights does not demand a race mentality uh, in a DSU. The rule of capture is not the best guide for developing any sort of basin economically or for serious and disciplined development. So in your opinion, does the first in time concept primarily drive decisions at Noble? It has not in the past. Noble has been operating this basin for, for a long time. Uh, but given some of the recent developments, the first in time, it seems that's that's the only way to go. The only way to protect your interest that you've spent a considerable amount of money developing would be to file permits with this commission, whether we intended to drill them or not. Noble doesn't want to get in that habit, but we feel like our hand is being forced if other operators are allowed to do what, what Confluence is proposing. Mr. Bolton, lastly here, what is your opinion of Confluence's approach with the application lands? They they are acting as an unauthorized surrogate for Noble Energy, developing our 100% leasehold in Section 5 and our roughly 89% leasehold in Section 4. I, <clears throat> I appreciate their concern with our 100% leasehold and our 100% working interest well in Section 5, and maybe that's because some of the Confluence folks used to work at Noble, and so they're still concerned about Noble's well-being. However, the timing, the timing, going back to that issue, it's this, that's, not in the, that's not the rules. Noble should be free to develop its leasehold as it sees fit, and that's not the case here. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. With no further questions from me, or request that you accept Mr. Bolton's testimony to the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Hayes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple of questions for Cross. First, Mr. Bolton, I want to direct your attention to your exhibit here. This is what Noble is characterizing as Confluence's acreage over here. That's not correct. That's <laughs> that was our GAS uh, mapping. So that if you look at the entirety of the section of five and four, that would equate to ninety-four percent in the green and 6% in the white. So is it correct that in fact Confluence's acreage is in this southwest quarter here? That's correct. Confluence is 80 acres out of 1,280 acres in the southwest section. Uh, if they wanted to, they could certainly have proposed well bore spacing units where their working interest would be much higher than 6.25%. Um, Mr. Bolton, is it correct that the Dillard well is uh, eight years old? Yes. And. Do you dispute the uh, testimony that uh, Confluence put on to the effect that that well is apparently producing about a barrel and a half a day? I'm not an engineer, and I don't. I, I mean, I know that it is producing, and it's producing in, uh, enough for Noble to continue to hold the leasehold in Section Five. You mentioned in your testimony that uh, uh, Noble and Confluence had done a, done a couple of uh, transactions last year. In fact, was not this area, the Section 4 and 5, uh, specifically excluded from Noble and Confluence's transactional uh, flow? Noble and Confluence couldn't reach an agreement in this area. And uh, it's just, I mean, we, we attempted to. We were open to it. And uh, what Confluence uh, was offering wasn't acceptable to Noble. Now, um, I think we heard you testify that Noble doesn't have any plans to develop these two sections. Do we hear that correctly? Outside of acquiring 93% of the leasehold, no. Uh, but Noble doesn't have an engineering analysis or drilling plan that competes with Confluence's plan. Other than acquiring the leasehold, no. Is it Noble's position that uh, other operators should wait for Noble to make up its mind before they make drilling proposals? That's not what I'm saying, but in an instance where we have 94% of the leasehold, it seems that a prudent operator would, would let Noble develop what it's, what it's acquired, what it's spent time and energy and money developing. 
Especially given the fact that we drilled a develop, a, a, an appraisal well just one mile to the east and are still waiting for the results. Thank you. I have no further questions. Very well. Commissioners, any questions? <coughs> oh, sorry. You get a redirect. I apologize. Thank you, Commissioner Benson. Real quickly, Mr. Bolton, but piggybacking off of uh, Mr. Hayes' question, you, you're not aware of any obligation under the rules to drill quickly, drill now, you have the chance to wait and create a real viable development plan that would be consistent with Noble's success in other lands that Noble owns, correct? That's correct. Noble has 300,000 plus acres in the basin. And uh, if, if, if the commission is making a rule today that requires Noble to develop that acreage within a certain time, I'm, I'm certainly not aware of that. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. No further questions. Mr. Boygan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a few questions for Mr. Bolton. Um, I think I heard you say that one of the reasons that Noble wants to retain that well is that it's holding the lease. That is one of the reasons, yes. So is it your testimony that the well is producing and paying quantities within the meaning of the lease? I don't know that that's... Uh, I mean, it, it is producing uh, enough to, to hold that lease, yes. Has any landowner, lessor, mineral owner made a claim for breach of the implied covenant of further development? No. Uh, I think I heard you say that the rule of capture should not prevail in determining um, development obligations out there or rights or DSU applications. Is, did I hear you correctly? <coughs> yes. So are, are you arguing for the rule of failure to capture? Is that is that the counter that you should be able to just sit on your lease indefinitely? No, but the rules don't have a timing element to them. So I mean, if we're if we're expected to to kind of abide by a a timing rule that no one is really put in in black and white, that's that's very hard to do. Okay. Um, have you looked at the five ten statements that are in the record? That's before us? The 511s, sir? The 511, they say they're 510s, but... Um, are, are you referring to the 510 statement from Confluence's uh, owner, Lisa? Uh, well, there are several. One is from a surface owner. A few are from mineral owners in Section 4. And then there's one from, looks like a... Uh, uh, gatherer, uh, gathering and processing company. Have, have you looked at those? Not in detail. Okay. So, um, there are a few from landowners in section four who say that, uh, Noble's been holding a lease on their minerals in section four by payment of shut-in royalties since 2016. Can you, could you explain what's going on there? Every operator in the basin holds leases by production in other sections. There wasn't a pew clause in that lease. Uh, we're, we're within the, we are holding that acreage uh, the way that any other operator, and I'm sure, including Confluence, holds other leases. I'm sure that's true. I'm just trying to understand what the situation is. Is that, it's referring to a vertical well? In section four, apparently? there's there's the section four one of Noble's leases in section four also has lands in section eighteen. There's no pew clause in that lease, so Noble is holding that lease by production in section eighteen. It's it's holding the acres in section four and section eighteen based on the production in section eighteen. Okay, but these five ten statements, several of them say that you're paying them shut in royalty. <clears throat> that's a that's a clause in the lease that allows us to to keep the lease uh, going. When there's no production. When there's no production. <clears throat> right, so I'm just trying to understand what well they're referring to. It sounds like they're saying that there's a well in section four that you're paying shut-in royalty on. I'm just trying to there's, understand. This is Confluence's uh, exhibits that I think you're referring to, but there is product. there was production in section 18 that was holding the lease in <clears throat> section four that lease then is sometimes held by shut-in payments on the on the lease in section 18 for the previous production in 18. 
Okay, so there's no well, there's no vertical well in section four that's shut in. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. <clears throat> that's all I've got. Thanks. I, I would like to clarify something with uh, the hearings manager with respect to these statements. <clears throat> It was implied that these are confluences exhibits. Are they confluence exhibits or just independent 510 statements? They are independent 510 statements that are part of the adjudicatory, adjudicatory record. Thank you. I'm glad somebody else has trouble with that word. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. All right. You have your no questions. Any other commissioner questions? Okay. Um, I have a question, and we'll, this, the exhibit that you have up is fine, Mr. Bolton. Um, if you were going to do it, because you mentioned developing this on wellbore spacing unit, which you know, that would increase Confluence's interest in those particular wells and the WSUs, uh, whereas if they do the DSU, their interest is diluted. Uh, what direction and what length, uh, given your experience, would you do those wellbore spacing units if you were going to do those? I can't speak for, for Confluence and how I'm they would want to you, develop I'm it. I'm asking you on your I, I, I mean, I don't, Noble Energy's never drilled a well where we only had 80 acres in a, in a 640. Uh, so if we were going to do it, uh, you know, maybe I would, uh, a one section lateral, a one, one, one section lateral in section four, where I'm, I'm drilling 80 acres and I'm pooling in 320 under a well bore spacing unit. That, that seems a little bit more tolerable and, and a little bit more reasonable giving, given their limited leasehold. So even knowing that, that for the most part, folks are doing two mile laterals here, because they're more economic, you would just lean towards a one mile lateral and a well bore spacing unit? I think this goes back to uh, the point that, that they need to live within their leasehold. If their leasehold doesn't support development uh, of, a, of a two mile lateral, uh, but this commission, you know, is going to allow them to do so. They're 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 not living within their leasehold. They have eighty acres in this unit. So if you were the if you own the eighty acres, that's what you would do. I don't think I would have any other choice. Interesting. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Next noble, I'd like to call Mr. Mike Marini. <clears throat> yep. Good morning, Mr. Marini. Could you please? tell the commission your position at Noble? I'm a reservoir engineer at Noble Energy. Can you please briefly des describe your education? I have a bachelor's of science in petroleum engineering from the University of Alberta. And your years of experience in the industry? 10 years in the oil and gas industry. And how much of that with Noble or the greater Wattenberg area? Five years with Noble Energy work in the DJ. Are you familiar with the lands under consideration today? I am familiar with the plants. And are you familiar with Noble's forward-looking plans? Yes, I am familiar with the forward-looking plans for this area. Were exhibits B through G created with your knowledge and direction? I created all those exhibits. And can you please give a general history of these lands from an engineering perspective? Thank you. Let's, let's kick off my portion of the testimony with a little history about this area. So 7 North, 64 West is an interesting area. It's an area where we really haven't seen a lot of development historically by operators. It hasn't had the pressure like the township south of here. And one of the reasons for that is that, you know, in this area, you tend to see a little bit lower pore pressure and you tend to see a little bit higher water saturation. And it's caused some of the historical wells in this area to underperform compared to townships south of here in the core Wattenberg. Uh, you know, you can compare this to 150 EUR short laterals to, you know, 300 EUR short laterals down in south, down south of here. Um, so what Noble did is Noble's had a lot of success with enhanced completions. I mean, the majority of operators here in the basin today are pumping enhanced completions, more water, more sand, longer lateral links. And uh, what we did is we did a test well, an appraisal well. It's called the Roadrunner. 
Uh, it is one mile from here. Um, and uh, we spent $6 million developing that well and pumping our latest and greatest frack, pumped 3,000 pounds per foot of sand on that, which is uh, well above the industry average. And uh, we did that and got that well in line at the end of 2018. Uh, it barely has six months worth of production on it. And we're looking at the results right now. So far, the results have been promising. Um, therefore, this area has seen some recent permitting activity from Noble Energy. In fact, I believe we have around 40 permits filed uh, within a few miles from here. Um, and uh, seven sections four and five of 7R64 West are adjacent to our acreage. It's adjacent to the permits we've recently put down. It's adjacent to the test well. And uh, it's an area of focus for Noble Energy. We do have plans going forward for this area. So speaking of appraisal wells, is it typical for Noble to invest in appraisal wells and developing science before committing to any further development? We have done this before. In fact, uh, we did it a little bit west of here with the Coomer well, which maybe some of some folks are familiar with here in the room. And a similar story happened over there. You know, Noble Energy comes in, makes an investment and, you know, permit shops uh, have come in and, and, you know, leased up 20, 30, 40, 50 acres and permitted full drilling and spacing units over top of Noble Energy's rock. And we invest $6 million to test the well so that when we come in and do full scale development, that we've got our plan together and that we can execute and get the best recoverable reserves out of these sections. Um, and our plans get, you know, basically destroyed because other folks come in and, and permit away um, with really, really weak positions here in the basin. Thank you, Ms. Marini. Let's move on to Noble's exhibit B as indicated here. Can you please describe this exhibit? Yes, I can. So because Noble owns 94% of this project, um, you know, the AFE on this is $125 million directly to Noble Energy, um, merely $8 million to Confluence, um, you know, 19 two-mile laterals, $7 million well costs, 94% is a substantial amount of money. I mean, $125 million is, is more than, than we can afford, and it, it's more than what's reasonable, and it's more than what's equitable. And I, I, I've in the history, in 10 years of working in the oil field, I've never seen an AFE come across my desk where we had 94% being drilled by another oil company, where there was no agreement, where there was no farm out, where there was no formal deal set. Um, we don't believe that this is fair. So 125 million to Noble, 8 million to Confluence, that's 10 and a half times the investment, and you're not proposing this. This is an order of magnitude greater than even other DSU disputes you may have had in the recent past, correct? Correct, Michael. It, it is three times more than, than the previous commission case that you heard yesterday. Thank you, Ms. Marini. Went on to exhibit C. Great. Right. Mr. Marini, will you please identify and describe this exhibit? So this e exhibit looks at the losses <coughs> which value to Noble. So how we view this is you know, if Noble does not come up with the $125 million, which I don't believe that we can do here in the coming future, as I don't think it's reasonable to do so, um, you know, the value of the leases, we're going to be out of these confluence wells until two times payout. Um, basically, the future value of these leases is zero. Now, if you take $8,000 an acre, which is, by the way, due to the weaker geology and weaker well performance in the area, it's actually half the leasing value as presented at a previous case yesterday at the commission. Um, if you take $8,000 an acre multiplied by 1,203 acres, that's actually $9.6 million worth of leases that will be worth very nil um, if Confluence executes this plan and Noble's un unable to participate due to the massive financial hurdle to do so. Um, the options left for Noble are to sell the leases. Um, we did receive an offer from Confluence to go ahead and sell a leasehold after the permits were laid down. Um, I believe that offer was 25% of what I would deem market value based on my economics and based on my experience selling leases and trading leases here in the basin. And does Noble regularly accept offers of 25% of value? If someone came to your front door and your house was worth a million dollars and they offered you $250,000 for that house and it was unsolicited, just a simple knock on the door, you would probably throw them off the front porch. 
Thank you, Ms. Marini. Moving on to exhibit D for Noble. Perfect. So uh, I need to apologize. There was a small copy and paste error on this slide. It does say the 70 ranch USX BB 25 well. Um, the well highlighted in the image is actually the Dillard USX AB05 well. That is a 100% noble energy well. That well, that specific well in the month of December 2018 did make 300 barrels of oil that month and 668 MCF. The values of 300, 300 oil and 668 MCF are correct. Um, you know, if you, if you calculate that in gross revenue, that is $17,000 a month. Now that well today is being operated on a rod pump. You know, rod pumps typically cost seven to ten thousand dollars a month to operate. I can assure you from the statements I've looked at, and from the forward-looking plans and the and the historical production, this well currently is producing revenue for Noble Energy, positive revenue for Noble Energy. Um, you know, if the confluence plan were to go through the damages to Noble are basically, we're gonna lose $17,000 a month in revenue, but you know we're also gonna to have to pay 100% of the plugging bill. There's been no agreement from Confluence historically to buy this well. This is the first we've heard of it. Uh, we haven't seen an operator come in and historically execute on trespassing over 100% Noble well with no prior agreement. Um, we, we have not done that in the basin. Um, basically, these folks came in, laid down permits, beat us to the permits as we were looking at this area. And, um, you know, this is one of the damages to Noble, and it's just not fair for us to lose our own production and control of our own acreage. And I do want to remind the commission, we, we do own 100% of that entire mm -hmm. section. Ms. Rainey, I believe you heard Mr. Dickinson's testimony where he said that it is plausible that drilling the proposed wells in this proposed DSU could affect, quote, the, DS, the, the Dillard USX well. In your professional opinion, what type of effect would that be? It'll be a negative effect and Confluence has not disputed that here today. And should that effect be pulling that well offline, uh, is it your understanding that Noble is on the hook for 100% of the P&A costs? My understanding today is we will pay 100% of the well of the P&A costs. Thank you, Ms. Marini. And we will not benefit in the new wells to compensate for that because we just don't have $125 million in our budget to fund a confluence program we object to. All right, moving to Noble's Exhibit E. Mr. Marini, could you please identify and describe this exhibit, please? This exhibit highlights confluence's proposed well spacing. So what were the results? Um, because I mentioned that, as I mentioned that this area does have some pretty cha challenging well results, I just simply don't understand why we would operate this at a tighter well spacing. I, I think it needs to have a wider spacing in it as there's just less hydrocarbon here uh, and less that we can recover. Uh, I think that's just intuitive. Um, this is another reason why we just fail to want to participate in this project. But Overall here, one thing I really want you to take away is that I have not seen Confluence drill a project where they spaced out a codal at 100 feet and I haven't gotten a chance to review the results. I don't, I don't believe this exists and I haven't seen any numbers if it does. For $125 million on our side and only $8 million on Confluence's, they get to use Noble Energy as a guinea pig here in the basin. And, and that's not fair. It's not right. We don't space out our wells. We have a lot of experience here in the basin. Um, we think this will lead to waste. Um, it's an inefficient plan. And uh, you know, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the COGCC's mission statement, as you all know very well, you know, the prevention of waste and the efficient exploration of production oil and gas is really key here. Um, thank you. Ms. Marini, uh, are you suggesting that Confluence did not consult with you on how the wells would be set up in space before they filed this application? Oh, good point. Yeah, we do own 96% of this project. We're being asked to pony up the majority of the bill and we get no say in the well planning. I don't believe that that's fair. I don't believe that that's right. And you broadly mentioned how this purported 
drilling plan would lead to waste. So are you su suggesting a stranded resource? Can you help me out with that a little further? I believe it'll lead to economic waste and, you know, our investment of $125 million, it'll be pretty tough to recover that on these specific wells. Thank you, Ms. Marini. All right, moving on to exhibit F, could you please identify and describe this exhibit, please? Yes, it, it is actually an exhibit from Confluence's 511 testimony. On the top, you can see the Niobrara drainage area calculations. Uh, it's exhibit E7 of Confluence's testimony they created. This is a requirement to file a DSU here in Colorado. They say that one Niobrara well drains 35 acres. Now, uh, they only own about uh, 89 .6. 80 acres here. Uh, in this application, but they they have enough they have enough acreage to drill two Codel well, two Niagara wells. Um, you know, if if they were here today and and proposing two short laterals, as Mr. Bolton uh, uh, alluded to earlier, we wouldn't be here protesting that that they would have a high working interest in those wells potentially, and uh, that'd be a reasonable development plan. And they they have the potential to go ahead and and develop their leases. Um, but based on their own drainage calculations, they do not have enough ownership to develop 19 wells. They don't, they don't have that. And they also have enough ownership for zero Codell wells, except they're proposing four. Yeah. And lastly, Ms. Marini, Noble's Exhibit G, could you please identify and describe this exhibit? This is the most concerning of the situation I'm seeing here with Confluence today. So what we've done is we've mapped up their activity in the basin to date. Um, you know, they've gone ahead since 2016 when the company formed, they've permitted 252 wells in the basin. Those wells are listed in green on the map. Now in purple, those are the wells they've drilled. Uh, I believe it's 17 wells to date and only eight of them actually producing it online to date. As you can see from the map, there's no full scale development here. <coughs> they have never once drilled, what, more than two wells off of a pad? I mean, you, you can see here that, that they've never drilled 19 or 22 wells or how many many is in that DSU package. They, they've never actually drilled that many wells all at once. Um, you know, this is a waste case. Um, I believe these folks are, are really just truly a permitting shop. I think they're here to, you know, throw down permits, call up Noble Energy, say, hey, listen, we got the permits down. We'll get, we'll buy the rest of the leases off you, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll take a 75% discount to go ahead and do that. Um, you know, this type of activity permitting shops is really prohibitive to to getting this basin fully developed. And uh, I we need to look hard on this today. I don't believe that they really have any intentions to drill and operate wells here in Colorado. I think this is a sham. Ms. Marini, make a point about the 22 wells proposed with this unit. Let's take away that this is a drilling and spacing unit and let's suggest these were well bores as has been discussed throughout this this hearing. In the majority of those well bores, what would ownership or confluence look like? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, if if this was proposed as a WSU inside GWA rules and it is inside GWA, I believe the working interest for confluence on, on the majority of these wells would actually be 0%. And by pooling in all this acreage, you know, you can really abuse the rules here in Colorado. Um, also, um, you know, I mean, wh where does it end here, folks? I mean, can you can you lease up one grain of sand for a dollar and then permit up the whole state? I mean, there has to be a, a floor here. Lastly, Ms. Mr. Marini, what would the result be should this application be approved, Confluence gets its permits, but fails to drill out all the permits in this proposed unit? So that's the scariest situation of all is that, you know, if the folks come in and they can only afford to drill one or two wells, you know, what happens when someone comes in later and tries to infill that section? You know, what happens is, is that you end up having a waste case because all the frack intos. 
So the existing wells are going to be depressured. They're going to get hit with a bunch of frac fluid. They're going to take a hit to production. And ultimately, you know, if you had two scenarios, scenario one where a company like Noble, which all we do is full-scale development besides two test wells in the last couple of years, but full-scale development as far as I can see, um, you know, if we did it, you'd, you'd recover far more reserves in a Noble Energy full-scale development plan than you would with a confluence permitting shop that just comes in and drills one or two wells and runs off. Thank you, Mr. Marini. I have no further questions and request the commission accept Ms. Marini's testimony into the record. Very well, Mr. Hayes, do you have any cross? I certainly do, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> um, Mr. Marini, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have a lot of questions for you, but I'm gonna start with your last one first. Are you saying that Noble is a more legitimate operator than Confluence? Yes, we fully, exploit sections and maximize recovery factors with full-scale development. So in your opinion, Confluence has no right to use the permitting process to the same extent that Noble does? I believe Confluence is, is exploiting the permitting process here in Colorado, which has negative effects on the state and the lands within this unit. Now, um, I want to ask you, um, early in your testimony, you, uh, you mentioned the uh, engineering and uh, engineering and geology calculations on recovery factors are you uh, so confluence has exhibits in the record concerning <coughs> their calculations on uh, recovery factors are you saying that those calculations are invalid or incorrect in some way uh, negative I'm I'm saying that those are similar values to what I've calculated in the past I don't believe them to be invalid um, but it, what I have said, just to be clear, is that your ownership is far less than what your recoveries are in terms of drainage acres. And that just doesn't make any sense. So your position is that because Confluence owns 80 acres in this drilling and spacing unit, uh, those, even though those drilling and uh, recovery calculations are correct, Confluence still should not be permitted to drill wells in that drilling and spacing unit. Oh, no. I, I actually don't agree with that. I, I would say Confluence should come in here and, and since they own 80 acres, go ahead and drill two short library laterals. No problem. Uh, Noble doesn't have any current drilling and development plans for this section four and section five, do they? We do have plans going forward as we did drill a test well in this area and uh, are analyzing the results. The results so far have been positive and uh, as this is contiguous Noble acreage, we'd like to go ahead and get some permits down in this. Um, the reason we haven't done so far is that, you know, uh, Confluence went ahead and did this without our approval. But Confluence doesn't need your approval to do this, do they? They don't, but reasonably Thank we you. do own the vast majority of this property. Um, you, said, you said that there was no chance that Noble would have uh, any way of uh, participating or recovering any value out of this proposal if Confluence's drilling and spacing unit is approved, didn't you? I did. The options before Noble are really not very good, right? I mean, option A is we could sell the leases to Confluence and get extorted for a 75% discount. Uh, option B is we don't participate and we're out of the wells likely for life, especially with this well spacing. Um, option C is we could find a farm out partner, except that trying to find a farm out partner to the tune of $125 million is probably not possible. So when you say Noble has no chance, really what you're saying is Noble doesn't like its alternatives. Noble has nil chances. Um, now, concerning your comments about uh, spacing, uh, Noble has spaced wells in the B bench to the east in their drilling and spacing unit at 500 feet. That's tighter than Confluence's proposed spacing, isn't it? Uh, Noble sees the B bench as a prolific bench. Uh, 500 foot well spacing is um, adequate for this area with today's enhanced completions. And also I might want to remind that, you know, 500 foot well spacing is, let's just call it eight or nine or 10 wells a section, somewhere in that gap. It's uh, not 19 wells in a section. 500 feet is less than 660 feet, isn't it? Uh, yeah, obviously. So uh, Noble has charged Confluence with being a permit shop. Is it your opinion that other operators should wait until Noble's ready to move before they do anything in the DJ? Right. 
w the prudent thing to do for a prudent operator would be to wait and get the right science and the right strategy for full scale development, which is our intentions here in the basin. And is Noble the only operator capable of doing that? Um, Mr. Chair, in, in this circumstance, yes. Can, oh, sorry, just a second. I have no further on. questions. Commissioner Overture. I would just like to instruct the attorney not to tell the witness the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. So, uh, I have no further questions. Uh, do you have any redirect or have you already fed him all the answers? <laughs> he didn't state anything I was giving him, was reminding him of certain concepts to elaborate. Very well. Do you have any redirect? No, sir. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Boygan. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a couple. Um, I'm a little confused. I, I know it's common for me to be confused. Um, I, could you put exhibit D back up? D is in dog. Could you? D. D is in dog. <laughs> Yeah, okay. thank you. Um, are you saying that the well was mislabeled, but that the actual well that's in section five, your well, the, the noble well, Mr. Marini, um, is properly labeled, is uh, producing 300 barrels a month? <laughs> yes, Commissioner Boygan, I apologize for that copy and paste error. The Dillard USX well in section five is making 300 barrels in the month of December. Okay, so that the testimony from Confluence that said the well was producing a couple of barrels a month, or a couple of barrels a day, I'm sorry, is, is inaccurate. Is that your statement? I, I'd say it's, it's accurate for part of the year of December. We did have some higher line pressures as most of the basin has been hit with some higher line pressures lately. Uh, that's one of the reasons why some of those lower results happen. But in the month of December, we did get that well back online and showing some really promising results. Okay, so I don't, uh, am I correct? And you may not know the answer to this that neither party has put into the record evidence of the production history for that well. No, Commissioner Boygan, we put uh, Exhibit 28 into the, oh, Exhibit 21 into the record concerning the production history of that well. Okay. Mr. Hayes is correct. 21. So, yes. And and that, of course, is based on the publicly available production data that we right. had access okay, to. Okay, thank you. So that's the Dillard, properly yep. labeled, that's the Dillard well. Dillard USX, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Correct. Can we, and, is it possible to bring that up because if Commissioner Boygan doesn't ask this question, I'm going to. It's Confluence Exhibit 21. Right. The arrow pointing up might, oh, there you go, that works too. <coughs> oh, I think it's under my Dickinson. No, it's under, it's under, it's under Dickinson. It's, uh, Yes, that's it. Rotate so, that. Um, so, may I make a few comments about that? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, you can see. So, this graph is a little interesting. You know, it it it's since the beginning of time on the well. It goes back to 2010. So, the scale is a little bit skewed. Um, I would have rather have seen this show the last 12 or 24 months, but. You know, you can see a spike at the very end, at the very end in production. Um, you know, and we, we had had some line pressure issues um, in, you know, the well's just done well in, in December. I mean, it has some future utilities. We do believe it's in paying quantities today. It's currently on a rod pump and uh, it's an asset for Noble Energy. Okay. If, and if I'm reading this exhibit correctly, December production is not shown. I think it only goes through October, correct? That's correct, Commissioner Boygan. It's not shown. It was not available in the public record at the time. Right. Then. Okay. So just if I'm understanding this correctly from Noble's, no, what Noble is saying is that the production has gone back online, the line pressure problems have been resolved, and it's now producing currently at a rate of approximately 300 barrels a month? Yes, sir. There, there was really a surge uh, here in the month of December that okay, we were to great. capture. Thank you. That's helpful.
Um, you said that Noble has a few options here. One would be to sell the leases. Another would be to participate in all the wells. Another would be to farm out. Would another option be that Noble could participate in less than all of the wells, maybe some of the wells? Yes, correct. That That is an option. We, we can participate in any well that Confluence proposes. Right, good. So it's not necessarily a $125 million investment. It could be something less than that, and you could wait to see how the wells do, correct? Uh, well, because uh, we're asked to elect to the AFE ahead of time, the decision usually needs to be made before any production has been produced, before the well has been completed. So we actually have to elect or not elect into the well. Um, before it's drilled. Before it's drilled. But so not all the wells. Not all the wells. But if we chose to go ahead and participate in wells later, after we got some production, that probably would not be an option. Okay. But you, you do have other options. Yes, I mean, sir. We have that option. We could we could elect to invest in one or two wells, but you know, we and for example, but the rest of the investment would be gone then. Okay, good. Thank you. I think that's all I had, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Hawkins. Um, I just have a few questions about Noble's um, development approach for the benches in the Nibrera. And I heard you talk about the development spacing for the B bench. Can you tell me a little bit about how your what your development approach would be for the A and the C bench? I, I'd be happy to, Commissioner Hawkins. Um, the Roadrunner well, one mile of the what, one mile of the east here, was developed in the Niagara B bench. Therefore, all our future well plans here are, are also following up in the B bench due to the fact that so far that, that appraisal well has been proving out well. The B bench is one of the most productive benches here in the basin. And also fracks tend to typically propagate upward. And uh, you know we'll, we'll also get some benefit out of the A bench out of that as well. Okay, and then what about the C bench? Because I know uh, Confluence is looking at seven wells or to that amount in the C bench as well. I, absolutely. Noble Energy will not rule out our, any plans in the C bench, um, but we're just stepping into this risk wise. And uh, hopefully you could see some C bench wells down the road. Um, but, you know, just to kick off a full scale development program, I think it's safe to bet on the B bench. So if the B bench wells were fracked and, and the frack extended up or to the A bench, would you need the wells in the A bench? Uh, I would not suggest planting out wells in the A bench just because frogs tend to typically propagate upward. Better to hit that from the B. All right. Thank you. Commissioner okay. Overturf. Thank you. I have just a few a few things that I jotted down as you were as you were speaking. Um, and so at one point you said um, they don't have enough ownership to develop these wells. And then at another point you said there has to be a floor here. Um, and so what is the rule or, or the standard that you're asking this commission to articulate in terms of the ownership that's necessary in order to bring forward a spacing unit like this? Great, great question. Michael, I know you have a table. Could we present that table to answer Commissioner Witcher's question? Commissioner Nover, if he's referring to the response to Confluence, Confluence's pre-hearing statement, he would like to refer to page two of that, if you don't mind. It's a table of selected states. What's the document number of that? Do you know? I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. Based on the top of my head. Apologies. That's okay. Oh, I see. It's 44. Okay. And you're looking at exhibit who? It's a page two. Oh, I see, page two. two. Okay. Michael, do you, do you mind running through that? I know you, you put that together. Do you, uh, would you mind if I put that? I mean, he is kind of the better. I mean, this smile. is at least more explicit. It's fine, it's fine with me. If, if it pleases the commissioner. Do you have an objection to having him answer this question? I do not object to Mr. Jewell reciting what's on the contents of page two of okay. their Thank you. rebuttal. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Uh, the chart here describes seven selected oil and gas producing states as examples 
of states that have looked at a floor, if you will. For instance, Louisiana requires 75% of both owners and royalty owners. Ohio, 65%. New York, quote, application for a permit to drill must control through fee ownership, voluntary agreement, or integration of no less than 60% of the acreage. Virginia, on at least 25% of the acreage included in the unit. Arkansas, at least an undivided 50%. Nevada, plan of unionization to pool uh, requires a minimum of 62.5%. Kentucky, 51% of mineral owners and at least 75% of the leasehold. Sure. So I, I I did I did read the materials that were in the packet, so I was familiar that that table was in there. But my question was, um, and, and recognizing that in in that document you 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 state that you're not explicitly asking for one of those standards to be adopted here. And so my question for you is that if we were to deny um, this application on the basis that the ownership was insufficient, we would then be establishing. A, a new standard, and I'm asking what standard is it is that Noble is asking us to. Sure, and that that's a, a great question, and obviously a very challenging question to answer. But the only thing I can say is that at some point there there has to be a limit. I mean, I made the it was a bit of a joke, but you know, you you could lease one grain of sand in Colorado and drill a whole state. Um, you know, there there has to be a, a limit to this, and I I really can't say what that limit is. I mean, I could give you a, a, just an industry professional expert value of maybe it's 25% just to be reasonable, you know, but I mean, it probably takes some exploring to, to, to get to that value. And, and I think looking at other states in the country and how they handle this uh, is, is prudent um, to, to developing that answer. Okay. Thank and you. I'm sorry. I don't have more. That's all I had. Thanks. Very well, so a few questions. Uh, let's start with this table. It's, it's uh, something, is that table, is that requirements for spacing? Is it for pooling, unitization? So I know this is, is this for secondary recovery? It's a nice table, but what does it cover? Is it specific to spacing applications? Because to me, it would be germane if it was, otherwise it really doesn't have a lot of bearing here. Maybe no, either one of you can answer that. All of the states here listed is for a spacing unit. For Nevada, it is for unitization of pooling. Unitization of pool. Arkansas says exploratory drilling unit, which is not a spacing application. Uh, Virginia is not specified. Uh, not sure about New York. Ohio just says 65% required. Um, and then the top one, Louisiana, says forming a reservoir-wide unit, and necessarily a spacing application. So I'm still left with some confusion unless there was actually the whole thing quoted that this is for forming a spacing unit. Yes, sir. And respectfully, to be fair, different states call their units by different nomenclature, and with a ten a ten page maximum, we didn't want to give you a full briefing on every state. Certainly understandable. Yes, Does sir. that do these once you get that? Because the spacing unit doesn't include wells, it doesn't include pooling. All we're doing is forming a spacing unit. So, do these include anything in addition to just forming a spacing unit? Does it outline the wells that are going to be drilled? Does it approve wells? Does it actually pool the minerals? Because we haven't actually even done that when we formed the spacing unit. We haven't actually pooled the wells yet. Correct. With the exception of Nevada, these all speak, in our opinion, to each state's type of DSU, and I think it would just involve further analysis, perhaps at a rulemaking, to determine what Colorado standard may or may not be. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can bring that up. Uh, the, I don't know if I save this or not. It's the, yes. So let's go back to, this is Confluence Exhibit 21, which is up. So initially you said that uh, December you actually well actually produced about plus or minus 10 barrels of oil a day, 300 barrels a month. Uh, I'm yes, a sir. slow on the math sometimes. So yes, sir, I, Chairman Ben. Yeah. So if I look back at this, the last time, and we do have the ability to blow this up, the last time that well actually produced around that range was April of 17, plus or minus. 
I think that's a fair value from the data I've seen and from what's on on Confluence's provided map. I mean, it's a little hard to see. I, I would have preferred if it had a zoomed in view, but yeah, sure. I think so. Uh, and then you said that you had some, apparently some pipeline restriction issues and that after you took that away, the well now was making 10 barrels a day. Yes, and, and um, the basin has seen some higher line pressures throughout 2018. So notionally, is it possible that that might just be some flush production and the well might drift back down below 10 barrels a day again? Yes, sir, Mr. Ben, it, it could just be flush production. Um, that is a possibility, although I'm hopeful that that well may uh, continue okay. to produce for us. All right. Uh, you testified it says your operating expenses are somewhere between seven and $10,000 a month. <coughs> uh, and notionally, with the numbers that were provided, uh, the reported production, the reported by Confluence, said that well averaged somewhere in the neighborhood of just under two barrels a day and 12 MCF a day, which today's prices is somewhere in the neighborhood of gross income of about 4000 a month. So I would have to assume that, that your hope is that this well will produce <coughs> roughly three times its historical average to be economic again, because it certainly doesn't look like it was economic for the last 12 months. I, I would agree with much of that. Um, you know, when we look at paying quantities, uh, you know, you, the things that are outside of the operator's control uh, don't necessarily kick the well offline and and force us to plug in the band in our asset. Uh, you know, the line pressure was outside of Noble Energy's control for that period of time. Line pressure was outside of that that Noble Energy's control for that period of time. Um, we're, we're hoping there's utility for the well down the road. Yeah. I understand. I was just sort of getting at where do you have to get to to actually have the well have a positive income because to me it looks like it did not have a positive income over the last 12 months. Uh, absolutely. I, I will not, uh, um, don't want to lead anyone on. I mean, it, it is a marginally producing well, uh, but you know, from the way I look at it, I mean, it's, it's a, it was drilled eight years ago. Uh, it's paid off production. Um, you know, it, it still has some utility. Um, if we had, an opportunity to invest if we if we had access to that kind of capital of 125 million dollars and could invest in confluence's plan i would have no problems with seeing that well get plugged as, as we would have the benefit of the new wells okay and you mentioned that you it, at some point in time there that you said uh, and this is sort of a difficult question but you said you had no say in the planning of this of this program, although the wells haven't actually been laid out as this is proposed based on this drilling and spacing unit. I guess my question is, have you ever, have you actually asked to participate in that since let's say speculatively that you decide you do want to participate and you're going to have a fairly significant working interest? Sure. Uh, so Confluence had laid down these permits and this unit without Noble's approval or without giving us a heads up. So we didn't actually get an opportunity to kind of sit down and, and, and dream up the plan together um, uh, ahead of time. And uh, historically, we haven't had that kind of communication. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you, you went on at length on Exhibit G that, that uh, it's your opinion uh, that, that Confluence is, is a permit shop. That's your opinion. Uh, and they said, uh, notionally, I think uh, 17 wells uh, that have been drilled, eight of those are currently producing, uh, and various uh, sundry drilling and spacing units out there. Uh, I'm sort of struggling to connect that with, because you said you did your Roadrunner well was an appraisal well. Uh, is it possible that some of these wells might also be in that same vein and that they're a little, they are a smaller operator. They want to get their appraisal wells done and make sure that they're in a good spot before they go forward with a full development plan. Yeah, so I would agree that that's a possibility in 7 North 64 West, but if you look at Confluence's historical activity since 2016, I mean, 4 North 63 West in the center of the, uh, of the map that I have, the cutout, you know, that's like core Wattenberg, <coughs> undeniably awesome acreage. And, you know, it's actually right adjacent to the Noble Energy CDP. So, you know, really good project. Um, again, even over in that area, they haven't drilled any full scale development. And that's probably the big piece of it, of information that sways me to believe that they're really not here to be a legitimate 
long-term operator in Colorado. Very well. I'm sure that I didn't miss anything. Yes, uh, and I see if I can get back to the right exhibit. Uh, moment. I believe, I think it's your exhibit B, but let me check. Yes. E. Cover a lot on the costs. Uh, did you run any economics on this project? Um, so that's that's a challenge. I, I have not seen the results of Confluence's appraisal well, <coughs> so it was hard to really see what sort of forecasted production they would have in this area. Um, I have tried to back into some economics on the appraisal well that Noble Energy has, uh, except it's just really early time stuff. We've only got six months of production on our own well. Um, and the existing wells, the legacy wells here in the area, are just with the higher water saturations and lower pore pressures, it's pretty. It's a pretty tough project, really. Well, and, no and that, oh, I'm sorry. Go sorry, no, go ahead. Oh, I was mm -hmm. just going to say that that's what actually concerned me in the future exhibits on the spacing. Um, you know, intuitively, you wouldn't want to add, you wouldn't want to throw so many wells in this development plan because there's just less higher carbon accessible. So the, it, there is not currently any full scale development by any other operators in this area? Uh, you could say that the shable wells, there's a half a section of shable wells drilled by Noble Energy. Uh, but it was drilled with the older non-enhanced completion results like we do today. Um, pretty much every result you see in the area is going to be an older 800-pound gel frack, whereas today we, we frack at 3,000 pounds per foot of slick water and see, you know, two to three times the results. And that's why we're really hoping to unlock this area. So if you could, you know, I know this is a bit of a challenge, but if you said that assuming that you're going to go through here if you were going to develop this area and you were going to do that 3,000 pounds a foot you should have enough information that I would think to be able to say well my expectation is that I'm going to see this much of an uplift over my old wells and I could back into some economics just to get a rough idea of what your rate of return and net present value would be on this project yeah that that would be the strategy it's just I just don't have the the confluence results and I'm just so early on the noble energy results that I just didn't have enough to jump and into it and I could use some, to extrapolate from your other wells we could um, but the majority of noble energy's projects that are enhanced completions full-scale development are in substantially better quality rock uh, a township south of here and, and it is a pretty stark difference fair enough all right that's all I had thank you thank you What's next, Mr. Jewell? Oh, sorry, Commissioner Jolly. Um, one thing I've been looking at is these 510 statements from mineral owners, and um, I'm looking at uh, Exhibit 52 at the moment, but um, this owner, is, um, I'm just gonna read what he says here, uh, at least to Noble's predecessor, Petro Canada, in November of 2005 for five years, since 2016, Noble has been holding the lease on my minerals by a dollar an acre shut-in payments on a likely uneconomic to operate vertical well. That's what they wrote. Um, this is in section four, the app area. When if um, if they're if you're paying a shut-in fee, and I I don't know if they're referring to this. Um, the garrison well or whatever that um or not but if you're paying a shut-in fee wouldn't that mean you're not paying royalties so i'm not that i'm actually seeing the lease i can't yeah. tell Could we have mr bolton answer that sir certainly yeah that's correct well no. there there's we're not paying any any royalty because the well is not producing so we're using the savings clause of the shut-in payment to hold the lease. It's a common practice in the basin. Even if it's producing 300 barrels a month? This is in section four, not section five. You're referring to the, the leases in section four. The, the, lease, the lease in section five is, is held by production. You're, you're referring to the okay. section four. Could, could what I follow about up? section five? That, that one's still 
you are pan <clears throat> uh yeah yes in section five with the dillard well that's currently producing uh mineral owners are, are getting their full share on that one okay commissioner boygan um unless yes. i'm sorry is that it yeah, that's it. Well, it was, it's touching. I mean, I, I asked Mr. Bolton that question earlier about these 510 statements saying they were getting shut in royalty payments on wells in Section 4, and I thought you told me that there weren't any wells in Section 4 that were shut in and paying shut in royalty. The shut in payment is based on the well producing in Section 18. The, the lease itself is Section 18 and Section 4. So th there's one lease with different lands on it. The well was in section 18, that well is shut in. The shut in payments are based on that lease. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you then. So that's actually worse than I thought it was. So so you've got two sections that you're holding with one well that you're paying shut in royalty on. This is a common practice in the basin. It's, a, the it's also a contractual yes. matter between Noble and it's... I understand that, but the answer is yes, you've got two sections with one vertical well holding both mm -hmm. sections by paying shut-in royalty of a dollar an acre per year. They're right. not full sections, but yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. That was not apparent from your earlier answer. All right. Commissioners, any other questions? With that, that ends Noble's case in chief. Okay. I'd like to look at my... Okay, uh, there's an opportunity we've had, uh, the 510 statements have been addressed, so the presentation of those, we'll assume that those have been that. Uh, is there staff analysis that you would like to share with us here, Mr. Roush? Uh, there is no staff analysis per se. If you'd like a hearing officer recommendation, I can give, it, give you one off the cuff. We would enjoy that oh, recommendation, okay. yes. Yeah, we, we've had a number of these cases over the last few hearings where we have a small operator uh, owns a small interest in the unit and we have a large operator who has no plans immediate plans to develop it and i think in virtually every instance there may have been one that wasn't uh, the commission has ruled in favor of the small operator who's ready to drill a well uh, i think the um, net cost noble of 125 million dollars is a little uh, deceiving my understanding is there's two AFEs out there to be approved, and I'll bet those wells are about $6 million a piece for the full amount. Um, you know, I, I think Confluence has uh, met their burden of proof. They've shown they own an interest. They've shown the rocks and the oil is under there, and uh, they have shown that the uh, wells are, will not drain more than the acreage of the... Um, it's proposed for the drilling and spacing unit. Um, as I understand it, if a two mile well drills or you know, drains 32 or 37 acres, I'm not sure how you get that same type of drainage out of a small 40 or 80 acre tract. I don't think that would be the same economics or the same drainage and nobody has really addressed that. The argument's just been thrown out there. So I would, hearing officer recommendation is to approve the application. Well, uh, any rebuttal by Confluence? How about, let's just do a time check first, Ms. Larson. So Confluence has 13 minutes and 33 seconds, and Noble has 20 minutes and 39 seconds. They beat you on the efficiency side. <laughs> Confluence would like to uh, put on um, Ms. Mallon as a rebuttal witness to address the drilling and spacing unit versus the GWAT spacing question, very just well. very briefly. Um, Commissioner Ross almost preempted us there with his comment, but uh, Ms. Mallon has a few comments to make. Thank you. So uh, just to give a little background, when we generated the spacing unit, we were in the, pro or when we filed our application for the spacing unit, we were in the process of leasing um, additional acreage, which we have picked up. Um, and we're still working to lease additional acreage, which falls in the northeast quarter of section four, which further confirms our desire to keep it as a 1280 spacing unit. 
In addition to that, we think it's um, consistent with everything that's in the area. Um, right now, if you look, there's DSUs going all directions and there's very little, if any, wellbore spacing wells in this area. Um, in addition, we think it minimizes the surface impact and will maximize value on the spacing side um, subsurface because we're relying on our geologic and engineering expertise to space our wells accordingly as opposed to relying on 318A spacing. So we think it is um, consistent. So that's just a little background as to why we opted for a spacing unit as opposed to 318A spacing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Mallon. Um, so in rebuttal, I just uh, I want to say that uh, Noble has made much of the fact that Confluence has not uh, been around for very long. It's true, no doubt. Confluence is an aggressive new operator in the area. They were incorporated in August of 2016. They started leasing. They've been leasing in 2017 and 18. They drilled uh, 17 wells in 2017 and 2018. So um, I think the evidence shows that they. Uh, are not a permit shop, but they are uh, a very hungry young new operator. I also want to rebut. Um, excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. Is this a closing statement or a rebuttal? Sorry. No, I'm I'm rebutting the comments that were made concerning right. Confluence being a permitting shop. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Overture. Sure. Um, I also want to rebut the comment that um, was made about the rule of capture. Um, we heard a number of, uh, we heard a considerable testimony about the commission having to uh, prevent confluence exploiting the rule of capture. And I just want to clarify that the reason the commission exists is to prevent the rule of capture. And drilling and spacing is all about preventing the rule of capture. So confluence is not exploiting the rule of capture here. Confluence is using the rules of the commission to drill wells, which is what they do. Um, and I think uh, I will leave it at that. Very well. Mr. Do you have any rebuttal statements? No rebuttal from Noble. We're prepared for closing statements. OK. We have a closing statement by Confluence is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, commissioners. Um, an applicant in confluence position has to provide information and analysis specified by the regulations. They have to give proper notice. If they do, and if no notice is defined, as defined by the regulations has been proven, they are presumed to be entitled to the order requested. There's no minimum acreage requirement. There's no minimum percentage requirement. As long as the applicant satisfies the standards of the regulations, they are just as entitled to their order as another owner is who might own 15 times their mineral acreage. The facts show that Confluence has made an application that completely conforms to the statute and the regulations. Confluence is developing three adjoining 1,280 acre spacing units with shared surface facilities to minimize surface footprint and maximize their opportunity to drill and produce. Noble has not shown that Confluence's proposal will harm Noble's correlative rights, and it has not shown that Confluence's proposal would cause waste. There are only two grounds at issue here, and that is correlative rights and waste. Uh, Noble has failed to carry its burden on those two questions. There are five, 510 letters in your portfolio, all of them favoring this proposal. One is from Rimrock Energy Partners, who wants to lay a low pressure gathering line into this proposed drilling and spacing unit and carry Confluence's production away. There are three from mineral owners in section four. We've already discussed them. They want to see their acreage drilled and developed. They've been under lease by Noble and its predecessors for 13 years, and their acreage is currently being held in by shut-in payments, or held by shut-in payments. Uh, one of the letters is from the family that owns the surface where the wells to be drilled under this DSU will be located. That is the surface uh, in section six. They want to see this proposal go forward. Uh, if the drilling and spacing unit that Confluence is proposing here does not get spaced and drilled, it's likely that sections four and five will be stranded and may never be drilled. Confluence would lose leases and the resource will likely go undeveloped. That would be waste. 
And that would be contrary to Colorado's conservation statute and express policy. Noble has made an argument that confluence is too small to develop this proposal. Um, but I want to submit to you that Noble is using this process, using this protest, to try to legislate a minimum ownership standard into your regulations. And they are inviting you to overreach by doing that. Uh, Colorado could set the rule that Noble seeks. As Mr. Jewell showed you, uh, there are a number of states that have minimum ownership percentage requirements. Colorado's legislature has not chosen to do that. That may be an appropriate topic for rulemaking in the future, but it would be an error to do it in this process. Um, I am going to uh, thank you for your time and uh, ask that you find in Confluence's favor in this proceeding. Very well, Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Commissioner Benson. As we discussed in the opening, we did think there are some distinct facts here from previous so-called typical DSU operator-operator disputes. Again, most notably, this is a fantastic imbalance, 9, 94 rather, to 6, or 93 to 7, whatever the title may play out today. Either way, rock bottom for confluence. And something that with a greater percentage, this body has said, yeah, it's a correlative rights problem, but you need additional facts to get over the fence. And number two, <coughs> confluence is not surrounded by confluence's acres. They're surrounded by noble, at least certainly to the south and southeast and to the east, as you saw in exhibits 20, 24. Mm -hmm. Number three, you only heard a minimum testimony about any takeaway capacity, something that is, you know, for a, a group that's been around for such a short period of time, as Mr. Hayes indicates, critical and something you would think they would have ahead of time before proposing this DSU with 22 wells on Noble's acreage. Number four, you heard the technical differences and the doubt about uh, the way that these wells have been proposed so far. And you heard that they will drill some when asked directly if, they, if funding was available to drill in 2019. I don't believe you got a straight answer. There's a line item in the budget, but the actual funds in the bank, perhaps not. Even still, only a few of those wells, paraphrasing, will be drilled in 2019. What about the future? What about the development of this entire DSU? As Noble, I think you would take administrative note that when they go in for their DSUs, they knock them all out. It's worth waiting for that time to come instead of taking a gamble on a piecemeal approach. We didn't even get clear testimony on how you test a DSU with one well drilled out of 135 permits and already seeing of the 17 drilled in their history, roughly half are producing. You heard testimony from Mr. Dickinson say that they have knocked wells offline. So the risk we believe to the existing production that will be the toehold for Noble's global development in these lands can be stymied and at risk. And lastly, as I already alluded, you know, Confluence has no history of this comprehensive drilling, as you have seen in, in other disputes for this body. And respectfully, I, I take uh, Mr. Rouse's recommendation on advisement, but he did mention ready to drill. Well, that's the loaded question here. Is Confluence actually ready to drill or are they actually ready to file an application and a few permits? That's somewhat jokingly aside about the cost of their counsel. Still, that is a small amount to pay just to get this toehold of a spacing application. It's a far bigger investment to get a rig on site and to actually drill this proposed DSU out. And we simply don't see that happening. You see Noble doing it daily. <clears throat> and lastly, I... And noble fear is that what this is causing as far as administrative uncertainty, we discussed in the opening statements of this hearing yesterday, the backlog of permits, the backlog of applications and protests. We don't want to do this, but if this is the way things are going to be, Noble has no choice but to drop thousands of permits really soon. If we have to defend every single bit of acreage with the permit because a permit is prima facie desire to drill and not other factors that we discussed today that lead to development, and that's where we're left. We don't think that's the right way to go, but if first in time is going to govern in that direction, we fear that is going to be the new norm 
in the basin. So with that, we do hope that you will, um, again, take a stand for correlative rights, the prudent operator standard, and common sense ways prevention. 94 to 6 is just too much. Perhaps a rulemaking should come, but today this does not work, and we request you deny confluence application in 1804-00305. Thank you for your time. Thank you. A time check for confluence. Uh, seven minutes and 43 seconds. So you do have an opportunity for a rebuttal closing statement if you wish. I will not need anything like that amount of time. Uh, confluence simply states as rebuttal, all operators stand equal before this commission as long as they comply with the rules. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on Mr. Rausch's list says motion for good cause shown. The commission may permit sir rebuttal. Can you help explain that to me, please, Mr. Rausch? If um, Noble wants to say something else, they can. <laughs> <laughs> that is even clear to an engineer. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else you would like to say? We'll let it lie. Thank you, Mr. Rausch. All right. Okay. Uh, any additional questions from any of the commissioners? I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Ager. I have a couple just for confluence, and you probably stated this, but I didn't get it written down. So when was your exploratory well drilled? Who's got the phone? This is because you're making a record. You need to speak into it. <laughs> we drilled a two-mile lateral in the fall of 2018, completed it uh, December of 2018, and it uh, will go on flow back this week. Okay, and then your surface locations are negotiated, but not constructed. Oh, sorry. <coughs> we do need to. We do need you to identify yourself again, do I please. Do identify first? Yes. Okay. We can tell the difference on voices, but we need to hear it for the record. Yeah. yeah okay. It's Mike Dickinson with Confluence. Um, and just to be clear, we, we drilled the well in the, um, October, fracted December. It's coming on flow back this week. And then as to your, uh, my name is Angela Mallon, representing Confluence Land Department. Um, as to your question about the surface locations, we have um, the surface use agreement negotiated with the surface owners and everything's signed and all paperwork has been provided as well as any um, required waivers through our permit filings has also been signed by the surface owner. Um, and then in addition to that, the surface location for our Picaroon well was built and constructed. Um, <coughs> when we proceed forward with our 2019 plans, we will then move dirt and, and begin building that pad as well. But we won't disturb the earth until it's needed. And what is your timeline for wells? to be drilled this year or maybe the next two years? Right. It's Mike Dickinson. Um, well, much like we heard from Noble, um, we want to um, have a, a, a very well-defined plan about how we appraise results of this appraisal well that we just completed. Um, we'd like to see a few months of production. We don't require six months or a year to start to evaluate that. We'll have production on the pick rune here in the next few months that will um, evaluate those results. And then we plan to um, drill two more wells up here in different benches. Um, we drilled a, a NIO bench in the pick rune. We want to drill some other benches uh, this spring to, com to uh, complete the appraisal process before we start development. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. I have a couple of questions, unless Commissioner Boygan has <laughs> questions. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure who can answer this, Mr. Hayes, but one of the things that was brought up in, in Noble's testimony that about uh, sort of in reference to this permit shop concern is that uh, you've drilled some wells in 4 North, 63 West, and that can supposedly a, a core area of the, of the Wattenberg and why haven't you followed that up with a full development program? I'm just wondering if you could perhaps address that. And with that, Mr. Dickinson, of those 17 wells that were drilled and completed, can you confirm that that was done through 2017 and 2018? 
And were they all on the same bench or different benches? So there's a multi-part question there. Okay, again, it's Mike Dickinson. So I'll see if I answer all the questions. Um, the correct number of wells that we've drilled um, as a company is 11. Um, it was never been our testimony that we drilled 17. It's been said in here today, not by us. We drilled two in um, 2017 and nine in 2018. Our acreage position is unique and it's part of our strategy as a company. Um, we look for acreage um, that is on the edge that we believe to be good rock, but has not been developed. So we have to appraise all of our acreage. We have acreage in Lock Bowie that's on the edge. There's not a single horizontal producing well south of our position in the, in the township south of us. So we've drilled appraisal wells there. We've drilled appraisal wells in four north. Um, and then um, as we've discussed, we drilled an appraisal well in seven north. We've drilled them in Codell, A, B, and C. That's not our very A, B, and C. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. And um, can I interject? Uh, this is Mr. Hayes. I uh, apologize for referencing that uh, number of 17 wells. I heard it here in the in the hearing today and uh, didn't challenge it. Well, Mr. Dickinson is your expert, so we'll <laughs> accept that as as the correct number. So very well. If there's no other questions, we can close the record and begin our deliberations if that's acceptable. Okay, record is closed. Thank you all. <laughs> Appreciate your time today. Any initial comments? I'll go first. <coughs> go ahead, Commissioner Hager. Um, so first of all, I don't like rushing um, to permit. I don't want to encourage uh, first to permit. I want to encourage um, well-planned and environmentally sensitive, sensible uh, development. Um, Right now, though, we don't have a requirement to look at a, a minimum leasehold. Um, and so that, make, that means we have to look at the three-legged stool. And I'm not convinced that Confluence doesn't hold up the three-legged stool. Um, what I've seen is that I don't doubt that Noble Energy has a well-developed plan as well. It's just not as far, far as long. And their argument to me seems to be that they do, they own more, significantly more. Um, but I don't have any basis to make a decision on that. Um, I don't believe, uh, I'm not convinced that Confluence is just a permit shop. Um, they've got a test well, just like Noble Energy has a test well. Um, they've negotiated surface leases. They um, are negotiating takeaway capacity. Um, and we see that uh, the 510 statements from the landowners or the leasehold owners incur are more encouraged by, by Confluence right now. So. Um, I agree with the hearing officer's recommendation and will probably vote to approve the order. Okay. <coughs> One thing I wanted to clarify, and it's we heard a lot about, well, if this is what we're going to do, that Noble's going to have to rush out and flood the commission with permits. I think it's, in, and if I make this mistake, then Ms. Larson can clarify this, a drilling and spacing unit is not permits. And so they're not actually, the fact that they're applying for a drilling and spacing unit, they haven't actually filed permits. This is just to space it. Pooling and permits come after that. You are correct, sure, yes. So, so I think it's a mischaracterization by Noble to say that this is, you're forcing us into the, flooding the commission with a bunch of permits just because a small working interest owner uh, has proposed this drilling and spacing unit. And I think it's, it is clear that this is a commission for small operators and large operators. Uh, I think that um, Confluence has definitely shown financial capability. They've you know, notionally spent $70 million plus or minus probably over the last couple of years drilling and completing uh, appraisal wells. That's not an inconsequential number. So I think it's, uh, I think it's it, uh, to me, they're prepared, they're ready to go. The 510 statements carry a lot of weight. The fact that they have royalty owners that want something done out here other than just getting 
a shut-in royalty payment. And here's an operator that's willing to step forward and, and risk some dollars to get that done. Uh, Noble has a lot of opportunities to figure out how to participate. Certainly it's not ideal for them, um, but they do have some ways to look at that. It's unfortunate that they didn't actually sit down and do some level of calculation on the, on the economics before just deciding that they don't want to participate. I will su uh, support the hearing officer's recommendation also. Um, would you would you like to comment or make a motion? Don't you want to hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I have lots of deathless prose that I'm prepared to unload on you. <laughs> That's why you only wrote a brief last night, right? I did do that. Um, so um, actually, you said and Commissioner Agar also said most of what I was going to say. I also will be voting to approve the application. It is important to keep in mind it's just a drilling and spacing unit application. Pooling and permitting are yet to come. Noble could negotiate with Confluence um, a JOA. They could negotiate a well plan. They could negotiate participation. There's a number of avenues potentially available here. I'm sure Confluence would welcome Noble's vast resources and expertise in helping to develop this property. Obviously, Noble has other priorities. It's got a huge acreage position. We, we've heard that yesterday. We're hearing it again today. Noble is um, sitting on this acreage um, with marginal production on uh, Section 4, not even production, paying shut-in royalty when you don't. Shut-in royalty is generally paid when you don't have a market. Um, um, hard to understand why there wouldn't be a market for oil production if these are if that old well is a gas well apparently there's no pipeline available I'm not sure don't know if I were the landowners I'd certainly be asking questions um, but here we've got an operator a new player that's willing to come in and try something and and start developing and I think if we were to freeze them out we would be essentially allowing the existing operators to lock up their positions and prevent new operators from coming in. Um, we would be erecting barriers to entry. Um, I think that we um, ought to be encouraging um, new players, new opportunities, new, new um, efforts made to develop these resources. At the same time, I'm concerned that we don't have a policy, we don't have any guidelines. The act doesn't establish a, any kind of percentage requirement, but we don't have any sort of um, guidance in our rules about, for example, um, if, if, if we approve a drilling and spacing unit based on some representations that wells are gonna be drilled and the wells don't get drilled, um, should those DSUs exist in perpetuity? Should they lapse? Should we impose some sort of drilling requirement or at least say that, or, or impose maybe a time limit on, on the validity of these, of these approvals? Um, I think that we need to explore how to address the issue of, on the one hand, encouraging development by new participants and on the other not allowing gaming of the system. And so um, I would ask our new acting director to take a look at that. No reason why we should be spending all these days of hearing time over something like this. We ought to have clear guidelines and policies that would allow a hearing officer to, to make a decision based on a, a clear cut protocol and pathway for and, and criteria um, to get these things approved or not, rather than sitting here with all these parties fighting over this kind of um, almost impossible to decide issue, except that at the, in the end, as, as many have already said, um, um, we are here to prevent waste. Um, prevent the drilling of unnecessary wells, but to allow the resource to be developed. So I would hope that we can find a way 
for us to stop having to go through and us meaning everybody in this room, stop having to go through this kind of process and take this kind of time uh, and, and come up with some clear cut ways to deal with it. But I will be voting to approve this application. Okay. I had one other comment and then unless you have a comment, Commissioner Jolly. Sure. Okay. I couldn't agree with more with what uh, Commissioner Boykin and Commissioner Egger just, just said. Um, we spent a lot of time and it seems like there, we need a little more guidance or something in our rules. <clears throat> Maybe the legislature is going to do it this year about minimum acreages or sizes. Um, and I can understand Noble's frustration seeing um, a smaller operator kind of take over their, their, their piece. But I can also, I've been shut in and I've, and I've um, been held by production and that is a totally hopeless feeling. Um, there's nothing a landowner or mineral owner can do. And that's what's happening here and I'm sure other places and um, companies like Confluence, um, you know, um, mix that up to where, where a landowner or mineral owner does have some options. And I appreciate that. And um, I'll, I'll be supporting this. Okay. The last comment I had, unless you had some, okay, uh, is that how there was a discussion about the well board doing a well board spacing unit, uh, and this ties uh, to potentially creating waste. And I found it a bit disingenuous when both the noble witnesses said that they would form a WSU and drill an 80 acre lateral, which then causes drilling of unnecessary wells and certainly affects the economics because that would be a one mile lateral. And we've seen a lot of things come in front of the commission that two mile laterals are much more economic. So found that was a bit disingenuous to say that that's the way they would go with form a WSU when it seems to be a more economic way to do the drilling and spacing unit. Mr. Overture. Yeah, I just, I, I um, appreciate and agree with much of what has already been said by my fellow commissioners. Um, I, but there were two sort of points that I wanted to make. Um, one is that I think generally as a, as a policy matter, I think I'm, I'm sympathetic to the, to the claims that um, perhaps there should be some minimum standard of, of ownership in order to um, engage in some of the processes that we do here at the commission. Um, but ultimately, this isn't the appropriate place for us to have that conversation or to make that decision. Um, if Noble had brought forward a petition for a rulemaking or, or some similar um, format where we could have had a robust discussion about that, I think I would have been really anxious to have that. But um, that's not what happened here. Um, the second thing is, is that um, I am planning on voting in favor of what I assume will be the eventual motion to adopt the hearing officer's recommendation. And I did want to clarify um, why I feel that that's appropriate given that I did not vote to support the application that came forward yesterday under somewhat similar circumstances. Um, and so to me, I think we are not dealing here with competing applications where we're, we're kind of applying a first in time rule. Um, rather, if Noble wants to appropriately um, challenge the application that's been brought forward, um, it needs to be on the basis that it doesn't satisfy the requirements that are set forth in statute, that it will create waste or be contrary to correlative rights. And I don't see the same issues here as I did yesterday. Um, there's a fundamental different history in terms of what the lands are that are being spaced here and, and what, what the prior operatorship has been within those lands. Um, and also I think there's a fundamental difference about the existing um, development. And um, I, I would say this truly is a flip phone as opposed to maybe an mm -hmm. iPhone too. Um, so I wanted to just clarify that given that there were some um, similarities to the case we heard yesterday. Yes, Commissioner Hawkins. I kind of feel an obligation to make some comments as well. Uh, yesterday's hearing was similar as was pointed out. Um, but the development plan yesterday was a 960 acre development plan inside of a two, uh, 1,280 acre proposed spacing unit. And 320 acres had already been basically developed and depleted. And so I had some issues with correlative rights regarding that uh, proposal. 
Um, I don't see that issue here at all. I think the proposed development plan encompasses the proposed uh, spacing unit. Um, I think there's not going to be um, an adverse impact on correlative rights. There may be a financial burden that Noble is going to have to uh, decide how to handle. And I agree that the disparity in interests makes this a very difficult situation. But our current rules and our current statute does not prevent this operator from applying for this spacing unit. And I think our statute and our um, purpose actually encourages us to approve this type of application. So I'm going to be voting in support of this one. Very well. Commissioner Overturf or Commissioner Hawkins, since you're the last two to speak, would either of you like to make that motion? I'd be glad to uh, make a motion that we approve the application for the 1,280 acre spacing unit um, by confluence. Okay, Commissioner Hawkins has made a motion to approve the drilling and spacing unit as applied for by confluence. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Ager. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, are we prepared to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your time today. I believe we have a lunch break. Thank you, no executive session today. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we're supposed to start again at 1 o'clock. I think we plan on starting at 1 o'clock. <laughs> Unless we want to try to start earlier.